Hi, and welcome to San Rafael, California. I'm Ponchito Ojeda alongside Kazimir Murawski. We're here at Dominican University where the Dominican Penguins are facing off against the Chestnut Hill Griffins. Uh, Kazi, let's talk about Dominican for a second. Uh, you know, the Dominican Penguins opened the season with an 18-3 victory over Notre Dame de Namor, uh, fellow Willa, uh conference foe. And, uh, you know, who do you look to have a big game today? Well, you know, I have to look at uh, I have to look to the face-off X, the number 24, Dylan Acevedo. Um, you know, uh, Chestnut Hill played Lemoyne uh, last week, um, and, you know, they got dominated at the face-off X. You know, so that's something that I think Dominican can look to uh, to take advantage of in this game. You know, Acevedo... He's good, you know, he's, he's one of those middies who can kind of do it all. He can face off, play good defense, and, you know, he's, he's shown this fall that he can also put up some points on the offensive end, too. Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, Dominican's going to be led to the faceoff X by Acevedos. You know, at attack, they have Grant Clifford and uh, Cody Bernstein, both freshmen, who uh, Coach Webster said expects big things in this game. You know, what do you, what do you think of those guys? Well, you know, you know, both of them are freshmen, and uh, I know Cody Bernstein put up seven points against NDNU. Um, which was very impressive, but uh, you know, I look I look for both of those guys to have big games along with um, along with uh, midfielder um, midfielder number forty three Kevin Powers as well. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. So uh, Dominican certainly has a, a good chance of winning this game. It's a little battle of the East Coast versus the West Coast here, uh, but we're going to go ahead and take a break, and we'll be back in six seconds to preview the Chestnut Hill Griffins. You're play on Lax TV. Here comes the duck. And Jose finds the back of the net. Bryant inside to Yealy. This is going to be a goal for Yealy. Bojano into the middle of the cross. Bounce. Score! Sean Beer. Sends it up top. Left handed shot by Vasilovsky. Welcome back to the NCAA on LAX TV, presented by Epic Lacrosse. Epic Lacrosse delivers the finest manufactured lacrosse equipment designed to increase playability and maximum performance by using world-class materials and techniques. Developed in collaboration with True Temper Sports, Epic shafts are made from the highest grade materials available. They have tested and retested each design to ensure durability, playability, and performance are optimized. Their goal is simple, to give players every opportunity to reach their true potential. Live, play, be, epic lacrosse. And Sportsboard. Sportsboard, a revolutionary mobile assessment solutions company for college, club, and high school coaches. And Gorilla Wraps. Gorilla Wraps is fast becoming the premier provider of lacrosse helmets and decals in the nation. As a brand started in Maryland, we know what is driving the sport of lacrosse. Let us help you take your look to the next level. Design, wrap, play. And by Team Minnesota. I'm Ponchino Ojeda alongside Kazimir Murawski. As you know, we're back to talk about Chestnut Hill. Uh, they uh, traveled out to California after starting the season against Lemoyne, losing 16-3, and then facing off against Notre Dame de Namor with a 12-3 victory. Uh, Chestnut Hill just you know, traveled a long way, but uh, you know, with one game under their belt, how do you feel they're going to fare against the Penguins? Well, you know, I look, I look at Chestnut Hill, and I see a team that's going to turn to its offense in this one. Um, with attackman Craig Owen and Michael Melichenko, um, I look for them to have a to uh, put up a lot of points on the offensive end, um, and we'll see we'll see how uh, how their defense can fare against the Dominican offense as well. I think it's going to be a battle of the two offenses in this one. Yeah, absolutely. You know, talking with Coach Dockerty, uh, a legend in and in, in of itself, uh, he he mentioned before the game that he really thinks this is a game about possession time, and uh, he thinks that it's going to be a big deal about how the faceoff X goes. You know, what do you what are your thoughts on uh, on how they're going to be able to handle that after such a poor showing against Lemoyne? Well, you know, uh, as Coach Shockerty said before the game, um, it's something that they really focused on this week, uh, face-offs as well as wing play um, and ground balls. Uh, both coaches said that possession is going to be very key 
uh, in this game. Um, and you know, it should be interesting. It should be interesting to see how uh, Chestnut Hill faceoff guy responds to uh, you know to the Lemoyne to that Lemoyne kind of kind of beating. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think uh, I think Chestnut Hill certainly has a lot of uh, kind of that pedigree being from the East Coast. Uh, but, you know, it, it's going to be a battle, and uh, I'm excited. I think it's going to be one of the best games of the year. Certainly it's an early March matchup, you know, something that uh, we all love to see. And, and Dominican heads out east uh, after this game, so it's kind of a, a good preparation game for them, and, and Chestnut Hill kind of gets their season going. So uh, we're about a minute away from faceoff, so we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be back for the faceoff. You're watching the NCAA on LAX TV. San Jose finds the back of the net. Bryant inside to Yealy. This is going to be a goal for Yealy. Bojano into the middle of the cross. Bounce. Score! Sean Beer. Sends it up top. Left-handed shot by Veselovsky. Hi, and welcome back to LAX TV's coverage of Dominican University versus Chestnut Hill. The guys have just shaken hands, and we're getting ready to face off here. Kazi, uh, I'm your host, Panchito Ojeda, alongside Kaz Mamorowski. Kazi, you know, we got uh, just a second here before game starts. Uh, who do you think is going to win this game? Well, you know, I look at Chestnut Hill in this one. Um, you know, as you, as you look to their bench, they have a very big roster, and I think depth is going to play a big, uh, a big factor in this game. Especially with the new rule changes, I see Chestnut Hill to kind of push the tempo uh, and take this one 12-10. 12-10, here we go uh, with the opening face-off. At the face-off X, we have uh, number 24, Dylan Acevedo, which you talked about before the game, versus number 11, Sean Johansson, or Johnson, rather. And we're off. The opening face-off looks like it's controlled by Chestnut Hill. And we have a push in the back on, on Dominican. Balls with Chestnut Hill. Balls with number five, Craig Owen. You know, Kaz, you talked about Craig Owen uh, potentially having a big game this year. He's being guarded by number 12, uh, Dane Ferguson. Well, yeah, you know, Craig Owen, uh, as you can see, he's a pretty big attackman, uh, staying at six foot, 180 pounds. Um, you know, he's he's kind of a power dodger. and. Uh, and um, it should be, you know, it should it should be interesting to see how he fares in this one. Number 12, Ferguson applying heavy pressure on Owen. Owen beats his man. Dodges is coming around the cage. Nothing doing. He works the ball around. Chestnut Hill set up in a 2-3-1 offense from the top, or a 1-3-2, depending on if you're east or west coast. Out here on the west, you just say 2-3-1. We got number 9, that's Nicholas Johnson, dodging down the right alley. Earl slide, he beats his man. Works the ball to X with Owen. Round to number 22. And we have a dodge from number 44 down the alley. Early slot from Dominican again. Here comes Owen. Craig Owen up, up the right side. You know, Craig Owens, you know, he's, he's one of those guys who looks to draw a slide and feed. Uh, he's really good at keeping his head up when he's dodging, especially, especially behind the goal at X. Yeah, absolutely. It looks like he's going to be a key component of the uh, – of the offense for Chestnut Hill. Balls up top with number nine, Nicholas Johnson over number 21, Mark Lively. Lively dodges his man, brings down the alley, other side from Dominican, pass down to X, ball works the backside. Good defense and recovery by Dominican. Back up with Nicholas Johnson, he steps in and shoots over the cage. Number 22, Shane Morlock's gonna start, uh, have the ball on the restart. Yeah, with these new with these new rule changes, look for Chestnut Hill to really push the tempo off the restarts, especially on the end line. Uh, they have some athletic attackmen who can really who can really push the tempo. We have Nicholas Johnson inverted. He's gonna dodge his man from X coming around the cage. Looks up top, good, good push by Dominican. 
Looks like Ball's going to stay in play, though, and Chestnut Hill will just recover with number five, Craig Owen. Owen dodges down the alley, makes the adjacent pass. It's number 27, Michael Melanchenko with the shot. That's the first save of the day. Big save there by Sean Donahue. Dominican looking on the clear here. Carrying up the field is number 22, Ty Singhe. Gets the ball off to number 23, that's Jake Bernstein. Over to Grant Clifford, number one. Dominicans settle ball up and uh, get their subs on. Oh, Bernstein beats his man on an early dodge. And then decides to pull the ball out. Gets to number 27, Jake Craycraft. Craycraft from El Toro High School. He's a freshman. Gets it off to number five. That's Cody Bernstein, another freshman from Washington. Uh, Lake Washington High School. Dominican settling the ball. Uh, Chestnut Hill playing out aggressive defense here. Yeah, and as you can see, they have the pull on uh, on big midi number three, Dalton Copeland. Um, you know, he's a big midi, likes to dodge north south, uh, and he put up he put up 21 goals last year. Yeah, Dalton's one of the uh, is a junior, and he's been around for quite some time. Balls on the carpet. Ah, oh, it's picked up by number five. That's Jake Fritz. You mentioned Fritz in the beginning of the broadcast as being a key component to Dominican success, and they're already with a big play. Yeah, you know, last year Fritz was there. It was Dominican's leading scorer. Um, you know, he's a really good attack man. He had 30 goals and 20 assists last year. Here's Dalton Copeland coming down the alley. And he has a big shot at the pipe. Pipe. Looks like, uh, looks like we have a push on Dominican. Yeah, Ball's going to go to Chestnut Hill. Ball starts with Craig Owen. Quick restart. And, uh, and Chestnut Hill seems content to just settle the ball and play sixes. No, no push in transition there, even though with the restart in the middle of the field. We're at 10.58 left in the first quarter. It's 0-0. Zero to zero. You're watching the NCAA on Lax TV. Yeah, you know when we talked to uh, when we talked to Coach Webster before the game uh, about Chestnut Hill and the Griffins, um, you know he was really worried about them pushing in transition. He felt that that was something that uh, Dominican needed to stop. And uh, so far in this one, it looks like they've uh, they've done a good job at that. Yeah, absolutely. We're early on, but it uh, looks like both defenses have come to play today. Chestnut Hill dodges with number 38. Feed to number 22 on the crease. Big save. Another big save by Sean Donahue. Donahue having a big game and then a turnover. Number 22, that's uh, Shane Marlock on the uh, turnover. Pass to number seven and shoots. Another Hunter. big save. Donahue with a quite a flurry there. Yeah, all of those all of those shots that Donahue have saved have been low, so maybe uh, maybe Chestnut Hill will, will uh, change it up and try to shoot high next time. And an, a nice clear by the Dominican Penguins to get ball up to number 43. That's, uh, That's Kevin Powers. Powers. One, of, one of those guys we talked about in the pregame. Sophomore, midi, uh, lefty. You know, he's, he's, he's pretty good. Yeah, he, he definitely is going to be an impactful player today. And uh, even if he doesn't, you know, as Coach Wester said at the beginning of the, of the game, you know, they didn't have any points against NDNU, but still a big player, yeah. uh, an, an important player. So that, as you see a shot from Powers, big save. By the goalie, it's actually uh, number one, Dakota Moore, in the in the cage for the Griffins. They clear the ball, get the ball number 22, Morlock. Morlock rips, backed up by Craig Owen. 9-17 in the first quarter, 0-0. Uh, Chestnut Hill's getting their offensive players on the field. Looks like they're going to set up in a 2-3-1 a again. Yeah, as you can see, they still have uh, they still have one of their LSMs on the field. He's gonna wheel off now. You know, if you've noticed, a couple of Dominican midfielders stay on the field to play defense and offense. You know, talking with Coach Webster a little while ago about this game and just about some changes they made. It looks like Dominican has made a commitment to going with the the two way midfielders, as you can tell. And uh, you know, that could really play in their favor with the new rules and yeah, no definitely. horns. Definitely, with those new rule changes, you know how there's no horn, so. It's kind of hard to, uh, for middies to be specialized, and there's a trip. That's, flags are down. Flag is down. We got uh, number 24 on the dodge, and it, that's number 24 at the ball. He wheels passes to Owen. Owen turns. He gets inside. Shoots. Saved by. Uh, Another kick save by Donahue. Oh, and a garbage goal by number 27. 22. Or 22. That's Shane Morlock. That's a big goal, because if that's a trip call, that's going to be a one minute penalty. And Chestnut Hill will go man up along with scoring the goal. Yeah. 
With the new rules in, in 2013, Casimir, the uh, the face-off, if it is in fact a, a trip, is going to be uh, three Chestnut Hill players, only two uh, on, for Dominican. In the past, they used to be able to bring someone up from the attack to stay on the on the odd side of the field. Uh, do you like that change? Um, you know, I don't, I don't really see that change making, uh, you know, making that big of a difference. Um, however, I do like, you know, having the man advantage on the face-off because, you know, I feel that, um, you know, when there is a penalty, there should be, you know, there should be consequences for the for the team that's being penalized. Um, so I do, I do like the change, but I don't see it really playing that big of a, big of a difference. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, Justin Hill wins the face-off, but. Uh, we have a quick turnover by uh, number 32. That's uh, Thomas Carfenga. And then there's a little bit of uh, a little bit going on the sidelines, uh, but a turnover and the ball back to Chestnut Hill as they try to clear it. Yeah, Cody Bernstein, Cody Bernstein kind of looked like he got pushed in the back there, but uh, there's no flag. And um, Chestnut Hill will retain possession, and I think they'll have a man up. Right? Yes, it was a one-minute tripping penalty. So Chestnut Hill's man up here, about 40 seconds left in the, in the penalty. Ball's back with number 22, Craig Owen. Goes up to number 7, Michael Duddy. Or 22, Shane Morlock, excuse me. Uh, Craig Owen's up top. Owen looks across. You know, Nothing doing. Shot by number 16. Coach Webster was really worried about, um, was really worried about the Chestnut Hill man up. Uh, he thought that their EMO unit was very good and that um, Dominican really needed to buckle down on man down. Yeah, he talked a lot about their, they have really good time room shooters and, and they just understand uh, when to take good shots. And Dominicans, uh, there can't be much left on the penalty here. Dominic, uh, balls with Owen over to number seven, off a couple of sticks, retrieved by Morlock, and up to number five, Owen. And Dominican successfully kills the penalty. We're at seven minutes left in the first quarter. Uh, Chestnut Hill leads one to zero. A little uh, fake, fake flip. flip by number five, Craig Owen there up top. Something that we've we've been seeing more and more after that uh, after that uh, Maryland fake flip in the in the uh, yeah Brian Farrell's uh, fake flip for the goal. Yeah, a lot of a lot of teams are kind of you know trying to uh, trying to replicate that. Yeah, absolutely. Number thirty-eight, Dennis Kluzarich, dives down the alley and turns the ball over. Chestnut Hill on the run. They get the goal out of cage number 19. Comes around but decides not to take it to the rack. Instead, they settle the ball up. Big pickup by Michael Playa. And they settle the ball with number 38, Dennis Kluzaritz. That's up to number, uh, looks like it's number 20 here. 41. Oh, 41 has the ball. And uh, Chestnut Hill looks to settle. Yeah, that's a big thing Coach Webster talked about uh, last time they went east. You know, they found that they struggled in the clearing game. It's something that really hurt them against Adelphi in, in 2012. You know, this is a, another game. It's 1-0 to zero right now, but they've been on defense for a long time, and, and there you see it. You know, it, it results in a, a shot and a score by number seven, Michael Duddy, from the outside. Yeah, that was a really good shot. You know, the first couple of Chestnut Hill uh, shots were saved low by, um, by Donahue, but that one... That one by Duddy, he just he kind of just blew it by him, high to high. Very good overhand, overhand, overhand rip. 5:50 left in the first quarter. 2-0 uh, Chestnut Hill. At the faceoff X, it looks like we have uh, Acevedos against Johnson again. Looks like Johnson's able to get it out. We'll pick up the GB. It's uh, loose. It looks like Acevedos has got it. In the back, flag is down. He still has the ball. Wow, that was impressive. Free possession for Dominican, and now it's last time. Shot and a score by number 23, Jake Bernstein. So a push in the back uh, is gonna be waved off with the uh, goal. Jake Bernstein makes it two to one. Chestnut Hill. Yeah, you know Bernstein had the ball up top, and no one really slid to him, so he let it go and. Uh and stuck it past uh, past Dakota Maurer. I think that's a big goal for Dominican. You know, uh, just after giving up the two-goal lead, you, know, you don't want to let the game get away from you. You want to keep it within reach, and, and two to three goals is where you want it to be. So good good opportunity for them to take advantage of it. Yeah, new face-off guy here for Dominican. That's 13, Blake Crossman. He wins it forward, um, gooses it over there to number four. Cody Bernstein's got the ball. 
We're going to move up to number 48. That's Dalton Copeland. You know, uh, number number 13, Blake Crossman. You know, he's a he's a midi from San Diego who really likes to push forward on faceoffs. Um, so look for that. Look for Dominican to maybe use uh, use him a little bit more at the faceoff X. Yeah, Dominican settles up now. It's two to one. Five minutes left in the first quarter. This could be a big possession for the Penguins if they're able to get one on the board. You know, they can easily. You could easily see them going into the quarter break with uh, a tie at two to two, or even potentially leading, which is uh, a big a big part of uh, the game. Yeah, definitely. Here's 27. That's Craycroft on the dodge, shoots, big save by number one, Maurer. Bernstein starts you can the ball back. The, uh, the Griffins have an, a pull on uh, Dalton Copeland again. Some good interior play by the uh, by the uh, by the Penguins with some picks on the crease and uh, good hustle by the by the Chestnut Hill goalie Dalton uh, Dakota Maurer to get the backup. Yeah, you know, with those new rule changes, uh, with no more five-second five second rule for the goalie getting back in the cage, um, you see a lot less goalies chasing after balls, but they're uh, chasing after shots, excuse me. But um, there, Dakota Maurer, Maurer, it pays off for him. So. Yeah, balls on the ground here. Uh, lazy pass by Chestnut Hill. Puts the ball on the carpet, and they pick it up, and we have a timeout from uh, Coach Dockerty. And with that timeout, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be back in 60 seconds. You're watching the NCAA on LAX TV. No sponsor of Sports Board. Creators of the iPad and iPhone-based player assessment no, solutions that are used for recruiting, season, and camp activities. Sports Board's revolutionary paperless system is used by over 60 men's and women's college programs is being adopted by club and high school teams. For more information, go to sportsboard-win.com. Their goal is simple, to give players every opportunity to reach their true potential. Live, play, be, epic lacrosse. And Sportsboard, Sportsboard, a revolutionary mobile assessment solutions company for college, club, and high school coaches. And Gorilla Wraps, Gorilla Wraps is fast becoming the premier provider of lacrosse helmet wraps and decals in the nation. As a brand started in Maryland, we know what is driving the sport of lacrosse. Let us help, let us help you take your look to the next level. Design, wrap, play. And Team Minnesota. You know, I want to talk for a second about Team Minnesota. You know, uh, Team Minnesota is run by uh, Frank Clark, uh, Rob Graff, and Chris Larson in Minnesota, uh, former coaches at Minnesota Duluth and University of Minnesota, respectively. And Team Minnesota is a, a great way if you want to learn about how to play elite lacrosse and help settle up your experience for what you want to live in college. They're one of the best places to play. Guys, so... Uh, the first quarter here, it's four minutes left, two to one, Chestnut Hill. They have the ball. Uh, you know, how do you think it's been shaping up so far? Well, I mean, it's kind of, you know, been back and forth, you know, what we expected in an even game. Um, but uh, Chestnut Hill's kind of controlled possession here, and I think that's uh, that's what they've been looking to do. Uh, you know, before the game, Coach Dockerty said that um, that was something that was really important uh, for him because in the Lemoyne game, they really didn't have the ball, and that was one of the reasons that they – know that they lost that game. Yeah, absolutely. And Chestnut Hill set up in a 1-4-1. Uh, they get the ball around. Up top we have Johnson with the ball. Looking to set. They work the ball to number 21. That's Mark Lively over to Owen. Back to Lively. Lively gives it up to Johnson. You know, Chestnut Hill on offense is being really, really deliberate, as you can see. You know, they're taking their time with their dodges, setting up setting up their offenses. Um, and right now it looks like they're in, uh, in a 1-4. Here comes Owen from X. Turn, drives, looking to feed. Good slide from Dominican, and uh, he's unable to get the ball out of the stick. Another good, oh, wow. The no angle shot from Owen still goes in. That was an impressive goal from Owen. He beats his man on the inside. It looks like he's going to have to go around the cage and look for a feed because there's no one, no angle, but he shoots it and somehow squeaks it by uh, Donahue. Yeah, it looked like there uh, Donahue wasn't really expecting that one, but um, you know that's a that's a tough break for Donahue as uh, 
as Owen just sneaks that one past him. Absolutely. So three to one, the Chestnut Hill Griffins lead the Dominican Penguins at 2:53 left in the first quarter. We have Johnson and uh, Alcevedo at the faceoff X. Uh, that's cr yeah. Oh. We have Crossman again. Crossman again. That's right. Yeah. Good, good catch. And uh, Chestnut Hill wins the faceoff. The ball's in uh, number six, Donald Lynch, the third's hands. Gets it off to number seven. That's Michael Duddy. Duddy who has a goal on the day already. And Chestnut Hill's able to settle up. You know this. In the first quarter, uh, Chestnut Hills really had the possession a lot, and it, it shows they they lead in shots ten to five, uh, and in the scoreboard shows a three to one lead. Yeah, the, the faceoff X is certainly something that uh, Dominican's going to have to be concerned about going into the second quarter, um, and also just making sure they get clears when the ball's on the carpet. Yeah, as you can see, the Griffins did a really good job uh, this week of working on their working off their of their faceoff play, especially on the wings. You know, a lot of those faceoffs have been 50-50 balls that have just been controlled by uh, controlled by Chestnut Hill. 38. Uh, Dennis Guzard dodges, gets the ball out, pushes the weak side. Balls on the carpet. It's picked up by. Uh, tried to be picked up by number 18, Austin Franks, but quick restart from Chestnut Hill here. But uh, Dominican's ready, and they, Chestnut Hill settles the ball up. Yeah, and as you can see on that one, uh, Donahue made another save low. You know, he's he looks like he's on fire out, uh, down low, you know, bes besides that Craig Owen shot that he just snuck around him. Yeah, Donahue certainly is playing very well so far. Uh, you know, Dominican has to be happy with their goalie play. It's just a matter of getting the ball uh, on the offensive end, I think, for them. Yeah, they, they definitely need to work on their clearing game. Um, and, you know, Webster, you know uh, Coach Webster said that before the game. Yeah. Balls at number 41, Matthew, Matthew Festa at X. And, and here we have a new, uh, the new rules in place. We have uh, the stall warning on. That means they have 30 seconds to get a shot off. Here comes Festa dodging from X. Gets the ball over to, I can't see that, number 22, Shane Morlock. Up to 38, Dennis Kuzaritz, who weaves his way through the, uh, uh, through the defense. Still has the ball, too. Okay, wow. still has the ball. Gets the ball to number seven. That's Duddy. That's Duddy that, scores. That's Duddy's second goal of the of the season or of the uh, of the game. Sorry, um, and that was a great play by number 38. Um, that's Dennis Kuzaris. Yeah, Dennis Kuzaris, and he uh, you know he made a great play. They slid to him. He kind of ran through the sl ran through the slide, held onto the ball as he went to the ground, and uh, you know passed it to Duddy on the crease. Yeah, yeah that, that that was almost a broken play. It, that was impressive. It, it looked a lot like an unsettled situation, though. Dominican yeah. crashed down and. Uh, and, you know, Chestnut Hill kept their, their head up and got that ball to number seven, Duddy. Here we go, back of the faceoff X, and it looks like uh, Johnson goes early. Acevedes gets the ball, and it's going to be a possession chance for the, the Penguins. Balls with Clifford. There's 40 seconds left in the, in the here in the first quarter. Um, look for Dominican to maybe, uh, and Coach Webster to call a timeout here. Settle things up so uh, Dominican can kind of can kind of run a play. Yeah, it balls with number 23, Jake Bernstein, right now. 25 seconds left in the in the quarter. Bernstein inverts. He's got the he's got the faceoff man uh, Johnson on him. With just 15 seconds left, he's going to need to go to the cage soon. Chestnut Hill looks to switch. They make the pass up top to Powers. Power dodges down the alley. Feed to Clifford. Clifford's double. Looks like a broken play. Ball is up with three seconds. Two, one. That's the end of the quarter. That's the end of the quarter. Chestnut Hill Griffins, four. Dominican Penguins, one. We're going to take a quick break here. You're watching the NCAA on LAX TV.
brings it up top. Left-handed shot by Vasilovsky. Welcome back to San Rafael, California. You're watching the NCAA on LAX TV, presented by Epic Lacrosse. Epic Lacrosse delivers the finest manufactured lacrosse equipment designed to increase playability and maximum performance by using world-class materials and techniques. Developed in collaboration with True Temper Sports, Epic shafts are made from the highest grade materials available. They have tested and retested each design to ensure durability, playability, and performance are optimized. Their goal is to simple, to give the players every opportunity to reach their true potential. Live, play, be. Epic Lacrosse. And Sportsboard. Sportsboard, a revolutionary mobile assessment solutions company for college, club, and high school coaches. And Gorilla Wraps. Gorilla Wraps is fast becoming the premier provider of lacrosse helmet wraps and decals in the nation. As a brand star in Maryland, we know what is driving the sport of lacrosse. Let us help you take your look to the next level. Design, wrap, play. We're back here in the start of the second quarter with 14.30 left in the uh, in the quarter. Guys, you notice something going on on the bench uh, at the end of that first quarter? Yes, yeah, as, as Jake Bernstein was running off the field, it looked like... Uh, it looked like a Chestnut Hill player said something that he didn't really take a liking to, and um, there's a little bit, little bit of a skirmish there. Um, there's a save by Donahue, but you know there's a flag down there, so Chestnut Hill will go man up. You know, Chestnut Hill is really flexing its muscles at the faceoff X, and um, Dominican's going to need to do something different here. And out comes Ch uh, Chestnut Hill's EMO unit. Um, so you can see Craig Owens up there in the middle. Uh, uh, Brian Dockerty was Coach Dockerty was saying that he was a very good, very good time and room shooter from up top. So that's that's where that went, why he's in that spot. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and, and you know, four to one, 14 minutes left, going man down. Can't be what Dominican drew up in the uh, in the quarter break. And there we have it, a pass uh, from number 27 to number 19 for the goal. Number 19, that's Michael Playa. 27 on the assist, that's Michael Melanchenko. We talked about Melanchenko before the game. You know, he had one and one against NDNU. He's, he's a big part of their offense, and, and it shows today. You know, he's been he's a key, key component. Uh, he, that's his first point of the day, but still someone who's impactful on the, on the offensive end. Yeah, definitely. Coach Dockerty was talking about him as, uh, you know, one of their best, one of their best offensive players. Um, he was also talking about how he, he gets a lot of hockey assists because um, – he really moves the ball through well, and uh, he's you know he's good at drawing a slide. Yeah, absolutely. Here's the ball. It's out with uh, Dominican controlled possession there for a little bit, but uh, Chestnut Hill came back a bit. You know, it seems like uh, Dominican might be going to Crossman here on the faceoff, so we have another flag down. It it seems kind of bizarre that that was on Dominican. It, the Dominican guy was on the ground, but here's the ball with uh, Chestnut Hill with Owen. And they're going to have another free possession. 5-1, to 13-23 left in the for, uh, second quarter. You're watching the NCAA on LAX TV. And here's, uh, here's Nick Johnson up top. Johnson gets the ball back from, uh, from Playa. Or uh, Melanchenko, rather. And we inverse. This looks like a set that they really like, uh, Chestnut Hill, where yeah. they in invert their uh, midfielder at a two, out of a 1-3-2 or 2-3-1. Yeah, you know, Johnson has a shorty, so uh, looks like a positive matchup. Kevin Powers, you know, he kn known for his offense. Um, so uh, looks like a matchup that Chestnut Hill is looking to take advantage of. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, at 5-1, to one, Dominican's got to be thinking about uh, about taking a timeout soon if, if, if they score a goal here. Timer's on again, so again, a 30-second shot clock, and they get the ball. That's number uh, 21. With the goal? That's Mark Lively, one, uh, of their, uh, one of their midfielders on the first unit. Yeah, Lively with the goal, a, 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 another nice move by Chestnut Hill, and they lead 6-1 with 12-31 left in the second quarter. Coach Webster sends out uh, Acevedos for the faceoff, and, uh, you know, I think Dominican's only won one faceoff so far, something that they got to be concerned about. Yeah, definitely. You know, uh, faceoffs are pretty important pretty important in this game as both coaches stressed and you know possession time also is pretty important and it looks like oh, that Dominican's bringing out a pole there on and the it's a, and it's a non-releasable penalty 
Or they're short of man for some reason. I think it was that. I uh, it was that. And Dominican's able to get the ball. It's with number 48. That's Brock Beal. He's one of the captains, I believe, on the Dominican uh, Penguins. And they get the ball, and so they're man down right now. But, you know, with this opportunity with the ball with Bernstein, they might be able to kill the penalty. Yeah, that would be that would be a huge momentum boost if Dominican could kill this penalty and, uh, and get a goal here. Yeah, absolutely. 12 minutes left in the second quarter. Ball's staying with uh, number 43. That's Brock Beal, or Kevin Powers, rather. And uh, he's just possessing the ball at X, and now it's up to 27 Craycraft, back to Powers. Chestnut Hill seems to be content to just let them have the ball and uh, not try to double it. Uh, here goes Powers. He's working on number seven. That's Michael Duddy. Duddy with two points in the day. You know, being man down, uh, it doesn't look like the, the clock's on. Oh, Powers comes around. Scores. A wicked shot by Powers. Beats Maurer. Stick side high. Yeah, Love Powers. Powers, good midi from Washington. You know, really good lefty. Um, just beats his man from behind there and uh, and sticks the top corner. That was what pretty a, nasty. What a sequence of the last two minutes, you know? You go man down, you give up a goal. Oh, well, you give up a goal, then you go man down, you get the ball back. Uh, and, and here you go, you score a goal, 11-18, and you get the ball. Yeah, this very is big, very big momentum shift here, as I was saying earlier. Be, uh, it's good It's good that um, it's good that Dominican got that goal and killed that penalty. Yeah, we talked about with Coach Webster before the game about uh, having a lot of freshmen. You know, you got Bernstein, Clifford, uh, you know, Craycraft here. They're all freshmen. They're, they're key components of the team. You know, they, they seem to be pretty resilient to the fact that they're down and, and just ready to, to battle. Yeah, you know, and I mean, Dominican's a very young team. And, uh, you know, uh, you know it, should be, it should be interesting to see how they respond to this, uh, to this deficit. Here, here's Copeland, and, and we got the ball to Bernstein around the corner. Goal! And just like that, 10.36 left in the second quarter. Dominicans just cut the, the lead in half to 6-3. There's a big, big go for the Penguins. And the uh, Dominicans coming back with uh, Dylan Acevedo at the faceoff X. Um. Yeah, you can just feel the environment here right now. It, it, it's... It's, it's heavily tilted towards the Penguins. Uh, you know, probably about 500 people here, and it's getting louder every second with, uh, with each goal and each possession. Here's Acevedo's working. It looks like he's got control of the faceoff. He gets the ball out. He's able to pick it up. Chester Hill looks for a double on that flag. Acevedo is able to contain possession. Gets the ball down. Passes it off to Bernstein, and here we go. 10-20 left. Uh, balls of Brock, uh, Brock Beal. Yeah, you see Acevedo do that a lot. You know, he picks up the ball, and he's really good at running through doubles, you know, with that big power cradle of his. The, uh, the Penguins have the ball, looking to get their substitution, subs subbing their middies on. Balls up top with, uh, Dalton Copeland. You know, Copeland started that, uh, that last, uh, that last possession with a nice dodge drew the slide and allowed the space for Bernstein to to move. Yeah, you know that's uh you know that's really uh, Dalton Copeland's job. He's really good downhill dodger. As he loses the ball there, but you know he's good at drawing a slide and uh, a smart lacrosse player who moves the ball quick. Yeah, that, you know, that's a good dodge by Copeland and, and uh, Cheslin Hill gets called for a loose ball push and Dominican gets the ball back. Uh, you know, not a good mistake on the on Chestnut Hill. That you know, that's the type of thing that uh, they could have uh, stopped this momentum, gotten the ball back on offense, but instead here they are back on D. Copeland's got the ball again. He's going to dodge down the alley. He beats his man. Shoots. Big save by Maurer. Balls up. Oh, uh, we we have a push on Dominican. Looks like it's me number five. That's Jake Fritz. You know, the, the, the fans are not happy about that call, but it, it looked like it was pretty clear, clear cut from behind there by Fritz. 
Yeah, that was definitely a push from behind. It was, it was one of the things that, you know, it's just you're, you're playing hard and, and, and you can't fault Fritz for going hard, but it's it's uh, one of those things that, that you got to gotta play smart there. Yeah. So here we go, EMO for the Chestnut Hill Griffins. 9-11 left in the, third, in the second quarter, 6-3 Griffins. I think they're, uh, that the Griffins are one for two on man up opportunities so far. They are. I think uh, I think it's actually two for three. I think two they had three. one down on the first quarter and one down here. Uh, that last one they got, uh, they turned the ball over and, and Dominican was able to kill it. They're working the ball around. Ball goes down to Morlock. He sweeps it out, but uh, Owen's there to pick it up. And the penalty is, is released. Long range shot from Owen, and he beats Donahue low. Yeah, as I said earlier, Craig Owen has a really good time and room shot from up top, and that's why he plays that position. Uh, as you can see there, he just threw a fake, and no one slid to him, and he just stuck at bottom corner. Yeah, 7-3, to three, Chestnut Hill with 8.40 left in the uh, second quarter. Uh, we have Johnson and Asselvedis coming out for the faceoff. Interesting to see here if Acevedo can kind of get back on track. Yeah, he's gotten a couple of uh, victories here, and uh, let's see if this one the ball looks like they're tied up. Ball's loose and scooped up by Johnson. Johnson beats uh, Acevedo inside, and everybody's going right to the rack, shoots and scores. You know, on that one, Johnson Johnson came up lefty and kind of, uh, you know, he kind of did a Canadian Canadian shot there and and uh, beat Donahue low again. Yeah, that was a, a pretty uh, nasty little move inside face dodge and uh, nice little nice little not changing his hands back as the, the trail check was coming. Yeah, but Donahue cannot be happy about that one. He needs he needs a little bit more help from his, his close D guys, and they need a slide there. Yeah, absolutely. So here we go, 8-3, 8 834 left in the second quarter. Seems like every time Dominican makes a run, Chestnut Hill responds. And Dominican takes a timeout. With 8.34 left in the second quarter, we're going to go ahead and take a timeout. We'll be back in 60 seconds. You're watching the NCAA on Sports Board, TV. Creators of the iPad and iPhone-based player assessment solutions that are used for recruiting, season, and camp activities. Sports Board's revolutionary paperless system is used by over 60 men's and women's college programs is being adopted by club and high school teams. For more information, go to sportsboard-win.com. Here come the Ducks. San Jose finds the back of the net. Bryant inside to Yealy. This is going to be a goal for Yealy. Bojano into the middle of the cross. Bounce. Score! Sean Beer. Welcome back to the Lax TV's coverage of the Dominican Penguins versus Chestnut Hill Griffins. I'm Ponchito Ojeda alongside Kazmir Morawski. We're back here with the faceoff after a Dominican timeout. Uh, looks like Crossman's on the faceoff against uh, a new guy for Chestnut Hill. That's number 43, Nicholas Thomas. And Dominican's able to retain possession. You know, Lax TV, we're changing the way you follow across. Follow us on Twitter at, at Lax TV. Dominican's on the clear. You know, Kazi, big faceoff for the Penguins. Uh, they needed that, that win after giving up another goal. 8 10 left. What do, you, what do you think the Penguins need to do here to get back in this game? Well, as. I mean, just as you said, I think they need to start controlling the face-off X. Uh, you know, the Dominican face-off guys, Crossman and Acevedo, you know, they're winning the clamps, but uh, the Chestnut Hill Griffins are just being kind of animals on, you know, on the wing um, and really beating the, the Penguins to the ball, especially off the wings. Absolutely, and here's Kevin Powers on the dodge. He goes down the alley, feet, uh, looks for the pass outside. Oh, feet inside to Clifford, but a little, little pass. Powers on the backup. Ball's the number five. That's Jake Fritz. And Dominican settles down. Nothing doing. Powers got it back to number 25. That's uh, Trevor Gardner, another freshman from Portland. He played at Oregon Episcopal. 
Here comes Powers down the alley. It's Jake Bernstein. Bernstein's guy falls down, he looks to the crease. Another feed to the crease is dropped. Now Dominican's looking to push, push the tempo there on the crease. Chestnut Hill in the clear, ball's in number one, Dakota Maurer. Looks like Dominican's dropped into a little bit of a zone ride. Perhaps trying to create a different look for the uh, for the Chestnut Hill, and they get the ball across. That's number 32, uh, Thomas Carfenga. And Chestnut Hill takes a timeout. We're going to go ahead and stay right here during this timeout. And we're going to talk to you guys about Team Minnesota Lacrosse, you know, Team Minnesota, their uh, travel team for youth and high school players, run by uh, Coach Rob Graff, Coach Frank Clark, and Coach Christopher Larson in Minnesota. You know, Team Minnesota, their video is on Vimo. Please go check it out. Uh, they are trying to grow the game of lacrosse in the right ways in Minnesota and help you find the right uh, placement for where you want to play college ball, whether it be NCAA Division I, NCAA Division II, D3, or, or MCLA ball. Kaz, let's talk a little bit about this game. Uh, 8 to 3, 640 left. You're in the huddle. Your coach, uh, Webster, what are you telling your team? Well, you know, I would if I was Coach Webster, I would I would be telling my guys to get scrappy on those ground balls, um, you know, and also take it easy on the clear. I think uh, an Achilles heel of Dominican so far has been uh, their clearing game. You know, they really haven't cleared the ball well, and that's led to that's led to two um, that's led to two Chestnut Hill goals. Um, so if they can clean that up, you know, they 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 can get right back in this game. Yeah, absolutely. And if you're Coach Doherty, what are you thinking right now? Uh, you know, I would just tell my guys to keep uh, keep pushing. Um, you know, their their offense has been moving the ball well, and they've been very deliberate. Uh, and I see, you know, I would if I was Doherty, I would tell tell my guys to you know just keep doing more of that, being deliberate and uh, possessing the ball. Yeah, you know, you can't really <laughs> make any complaints to the offense, right? Scored eight goals no. in, in the first uh, 24 minutes. Chestnut Hill's got the ball on offense here. 6:35 left in the second quarter. Ball's behind with Owen. Works over to uh, 38, Dennis Kluzaritz. Up to number 13, Michael Landau. It's the first time we've called his name out. He looks to dodge. Good defense by Dominican. Ball's back with number five, Owen again. Owen dodging upfield. Good defense by uh, number 22. That's Ty Singh. Chestnut Hill looking content to, to be deliberate, like you said, Kaz. Uh, you know, just working the ball, trying to not force anything, just be patient. Yeah, and you know, uh, you know, when you're up by five goals in the second quarter, it's 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 a good way to play lacrosse. Yeah, absolutely. The clock is, is certainly your friend, although you don't want to rest on your laurels just yet. Shot for number 13. That's Michael Landau. Uh, Donahue is screened on that shot, and the ball goes in. Far pipe. Nice shot by Landau. Yeah, Donnie, who got a bad read on that because his, uh, his, you know, his defender was in the way, but um, it was a good shot right over, right over the defender's head, right into the bottom corner. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Nine to three, 544 left in the second quarter. Dominican certainly needs to find a way to stop the bleeding here. I think, uh, I think it starts back at the faceoff X. We've talked about it a lot already, and uh, Asselvedis comes back out. He's facing off against number third. Uh, it's 43. Is that 43? 43, that's Nicholas Thomas. Thomas wins it to himself. Beats his man. Passes down to Owen. And Chestnut Hill, again, content to settle the ball and, and work their offense. With 5.30 left in the half, you have to think that Dominican's just going to try and get the ball back on O, maybe get a goal or two here before the half and, and try to keep uh, Chestnut Hill from scoring any more. Yeah, what these young guys on Dominican can't do is start hanging their heads, though. Um, you know, it's a 9-3 game, and with the offense Dominican has, they can really put up, you know, they, they, they're really good at putting up points, so um, they're still not out of this one yet. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and there we see a nice pass to... Good back check there by Powers. Yeah, it was an excellent back check, and ball's picked... Oh, ball's almost picked up by number 12, Dane and Ferguson. But ball goes out. Quick restart from 27. That's Michael Melanchenko. He works the ball over to Owen. Owen dodging. Slide is slide is late. And we're going to have a conference by the officials. 
The goal is good, and the flag is down. Wow. The Dominican defense is kind of dumbfounded by that one. It's a push on Dominican, and I guess they're saying that he pushed him into the crease, and that's why uh, the goal is still good. Flag's going to be wiped out. 30-second technical is always wiped out on a goal. At 4.54 left in the uh, first half, Demi uh, Chestnut Hill leads Dominican 10-3. We have Crossman facing off against Johnson. Looks like Coach Webster's unhappy about the call. Talking with the official. It didn't really look like a push to me. I thought it was just good defense. Yeah, I don't know. Some of these. Uh... Nice, nice face off uh, by Dominican. Crossman with the GB. Moves the ball down to Bernstein. Back yeah, to Fritz. That was a good man ball there by uh, by Jake Bernstein, number 23. Oh, and Fritz, Fritz just loses the ball. And yeah, nice check. He saves it from going out of bounds, but it goes back to Chestnut Hill and number 77, um, Derek Darnaluk. Yeah, it was a really good check by Christopher Schaefer. You know, he was uh, a junior from Warwick, Pennsylvania, or Warwick High School, rather, in Lititz, Pennsylvania. He was a big part of what they uh, – what they did against uh, Notre Dame de Namur, certainly listed as one of the, the key components to their defensive stand and only allowing three goals against them. So, you know, it's it's no no surprise that he was able to do something like that. Yeah, and as you can see there, I mean, that was just a, uh, that was just an easy, easy fundamental poke and drop step. Um, you know, 23 powers with a nice defense, but the ball is, uh, ball is turned over. They're gonna call a loose ball push on that one. Loose ball push on Dominican. That's a fine push though. You, he was he had a straight path to the goal and uh, yeah, that's a good push there by Dominican. Absolutely, absolutely. And they have a little man advantage here. Uh, Chestnut Hill does. They make the pass. Go one more up to number 23. It's the first time we've called his name today, Bartholomew Pierre. Works the ball around to Craig Owen. Owen's got it, gets it up to Nathaniel Tharp. Looks like Chestnut Hill's uh, showcasing a little bit of their, their depth here. Taking advantage of the fact that they have an early lead with 3.15 left in the, in the first half. Yeah, you know, something that I thought would play a key component in this one is uh, Chestnut Hill's depth. As you look at their bench, you know, it goes goes a lot further down, down the line than uh, Dominicans. And um, as you can see there, just a... Nice curl there by Craig Owen around the around X and yeah, he makes it he makes it uh, eleven three. Big time dodge from uh, Tanner Fisher, drew the slide, got the defense turning, makes that pass off to Owen and Owen buries it. Eleven to three with three minutes left in the first half. Yeah, Owen good did a good job of sneaking behind from X there and uh kinda it looked like the Dominican defense was ball watching a little bit. And they're gonna take uh looks like Dominican's gonna make a goalie switch and take out uh, Donahue and put in put in number 11 Ryan Williams. It's interesting. Williams, a senior from Colonel Newman High School in uh, Santa Rosa, California. He's from Windsor, a little bit north of Santa Rosa. It's uh, interesting they made the switch here with three minutes left in the half. Maybe maybe you wait till halftime, but uh, you know Coach Webster saw it as a, a way to hopefully inspire his team to to get going. Yeah, I don't know if I necessarily agree with this goalie change. You know. Donahue, I thought Donahue was playing well, and you know he he bailed out his defense a couple of times, but you know some of those looks were um, were pretty good looks from Chestnut Hill that uh, you know not a lot of goalies could save. So yeah, absolutely. And Chestnut Hill wins another faceoff. Balls at the uh, X with at X with 22. Shane Morlock gets it over to Owen. Owen's having a big day already. I think he's got four goals on the day. Ball's over with number 21. That's uh, Mark Lively. We're back to the first midfield unit here. Lively back to Johnson. Johnson's gonna. Johnson looks like he's uh, looking to invert again. Oh, maybe not. Yeah, Chestnut Hill being really patient. Yeah. And, uh, looks they like they're in some kind of three-one-two. And here comes Johnson down the right side. A little Pretty close slide early. Pass to the backside. And that's a goal for number 21, Lively. That's his second on the day. With 1.52 left in the half, it's 12 to three, Chestnut Hill over Dominican. Yeah, and that's you know that's a six-goal run for Chestnut Hill, um, you know, which obviously can't be good for Dominican. 
and you know it's it's kind of it's looks looking like it's panic time here in uh, in San Rafael. For yeah, the Penguins. A minute 52 left in the half. Dominican just needs to get the ball and and, and get to halftime so that they can uh, talk about things, get things corrected. Because like you said. You know, their offense is certainly as talented as any in NCAA Division II, right. and uh, there's no doubt that they can put up 12 goals on the on the game, but they just need to be able to stop the bleeding right now. Illegal procedure on uh, Dominican gives the ball to Chestnut Hill. Can't be something that uh, Dominican was hoping for. It's some of these little details that are causing them some problems. You know, that was a wing uh, violation on early uh, early go by Dominican. Balls with Chestnut Hill. It's up top here with... Uh, that's number 41, that's Matthew Festa. Festa gets the ball to uh, Michael Duddy. Duddy over to Dennis Klazaritz. Klazaritz gonna invert here with a minute 23 left in the half. You know, I'm surprised Dominican's not uh, pushing out some more and trying to get that ball back. You know, with a minute a minute left, it, I, would be, I would be poised on getting that ball back over Dominican. Ball's here with Kuzaritz. Dominican seems content to just play some defense and uh, hopefully go to the half with uh, the score the same as it is. Ball's up top with number 41. That's Matthew Festa. Festa over to Duddy. Duddy gets it to X with Kuzaritz. Kuzaritz is going to dodge with yeah. 50 seconds left. You know, a lot of the fans here are asking for a stalling warning, and I would agree with them, you know. Uh, they're going a good minute without dodging to the cage. Um, Chestnut Hill was, and uh, it's interesting that there was no stalling warning called. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the whole point of the new rules was to kind of increase the pace of play and, and really get guys to go to the cage and, and, and try to play offense as opposed to these uh, these long possessions with nothing happening. Here comes uh, Johnson. No, Duddy. Duddy beats his man inside, shoots and scores with 29 that's a, that's seconds left. That's a hat trick for Duddy now. Yeah, Duddy with three goals gives Chestnut Hill a 13-3 to lead, 30 seconds left in the first half. You know, Dominican's looking like they're having a real problem with their uh, with their slide package, and um, you know it should be you know it should be interesting to see how they respond in the second half with uh, you know with a 10, 10 goal you know ten goal dif disadvantage. Um, maybe if they can get something going on this face off with twenty nine seconds here, they can go down and score and you know kind of stop some of this bleeding. But uh, so far, it's been all Chestnut Hill in this one. Yeah, Dominican takes a timeout, and we're going to take a quick break here. We'll be back in 60 seconds. You're watching the NCAA on LAX TV. Harris makes two, three moves. Here comes the Ducks, San Jose finds the back of the net. Bryant inside the Ely, this is going to be a goal for you. Hi, and welcome back to the NCAA on LAX TV. We're here with the Dominican Penguins versus Chestnut Hill Griffins. Dominicans down uh, by 10 goals, 13-3 lead for the Griffins. 29 seconds left in the half, and we have a faceoff. We yeah, have a you know, as I said uh, as I said before the break, it'd be, it'd be good if Dominican get something going on this faceoff, and it looks like... An interesting little chain of events here. We have a uh, flag is down on Chestnut Hill. It looks like a 30 second, 30 second technical, technical delay of game. So this is, this is big for Dominican. They can stop some of this bleeding here if they can get a goal on this man up. You know, there's 26.2 seconds left and um, it uh, looks like Dominican, Dominican will look to push the pressure. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is a great opportunity for them to get a goal. A little momentum going into halftime. Uh, at the very least, if they don't get the goal, they can certainly hold for the last shot. 25 seconds left in the in the half here. A little skip pass. Dominican feed inside. Clifford, Clifford scores! Goal for number one, and Grant Clifford off the feed from number four, Cody Bernstein. There it is. That's That stops a seven-goal run by Chestnut Hill. Uh, and that was a big goal for Dominican before the half. Maybe that can that can bring in some momentum. There's 18.9 seconds left, so half's you know the half's not quite over, and maybe Dominican can get something else going on this faceoff. 
if you're Coach Doherty, you cannot be happy about that penalty. It just gave Dominican a chance to get some momentum going into the half, you know, get the get them fired up and, and give those freshmen a little confidence. Yeah. 15 seconds left. Falls down. And they're going to throw a loose push ball. Push on Dominican. Yeah, loose ball push on Dominican. Uh, Brock Beal showing a little leadership and getting crossing back uh, just to get in to play defense. And uh, Chestnut Hill's got the ball with nine seconds left. Yeah, and that's one of the reasons Beal's a captain for this Dominican team. He's a good leader. Yeah, cross with a big hit. Zero seconds shown on the clock, and there goes the whistle. And we're at half. At half, uh, Chestnut Hill leads 13 to three over, or 13 to four over Dominican. Guys, let's talk a little bit about that first half. Uh, you know, Chestnut Hill goes out, leads 13 to three, or 13 to four rather. Uh, kind of a big goal for Dominican at the end. You know, what did you think that Dominican can do better here going into uh, after that first half? We know they can do a lot of things better. I think that they can they can clear better. Uh, their offense can possess a ball a little bit better. Um, you know, it, they should take take a note. You know, take a page out of uh, Chestnut Hill's notebook and kind of put, you know, take uh, take the possession time and turn it in their favor. You know, Chestnut Hill's been really deliberate on offense. Um, you know, you see they're setting up for dodges. Uh, you know, taking a really moving the ball around deliberately and um, I think that Dominican can uh, that would really help if Dominican did that as well. Yeah absolutely I, mean, I couldn't agree more I mean Dominican's got a, a really talented offense and, and they just haven't had the ball enough you no. know they, they need to have it if they're going to score goals and and they can and certainly it would be not uh, a surprising to see them put up 15 goals here and so in the second half if they can deal with the faceoff X and, uh, and and get that improved I think they'll be able to, to do some damage. You know, on the flip side with Chestnut Hill, you know, 13 goals in the first half. You, if you're Coach Docherty, you have to be very happy with that. You know, what do they need to do to, to contain Dominican and not allow them to get back in the game? Well, you know, they, they need to do what they've been doing, you know, controlling controlling the ball at the faceoff X, great wing play. You know, they've been dominating on ground balls too, uh, which is something that uh, Coach Docherty said before the game was going to be key. Um, you know, and if uh, if I'm Coach Doherty, I would be pretty mad at my team for letting in that, that goal at the half. You know, how a team plays in the last two minutes of a half really really helps with momentum going to the next going to the next half. Yeah, absolutely. I think that was a huge goal for Dominican. I couldn't agree more about that. You know, I'm sure Coach Doherty will talk about it with these guys. Uh, and I fully expect Justin Hill to come out and ready to, ready to roll. Uh, with that said, we're going to go ahead and take a quick break, and then we're going to come back with the Bulldodge Power Rankings for the Men's Collegiate Lacrosse Association Division One. Bulldodge is a show you can catch weekly on Lax TV. Uh, Kasimir Morawski here is one of the hosts of that show. So feel free to check it out at Lax TV. That's www.laxx.tv. We'll be back in 60 seconds with Bulldodge Power Rankings. You're watching the NCAA on Lax TV. And Jose fights the back of the net. Bryant inside to Yealy. This is going to be a goal for Yealy. Bojano into the middle of the cross. Bounce. Score! Sean Beer. Sends it up top. Left hand. It's shot by Veselovsky. to the Power Rankings factory here at Bull Dodge. I'm pumped for this. Casimir's pumped for this. His mustache is pumped for this. And you're pumped for this. So, unlike the Nike inside lacrosse pole over there that the coaches come up with in the MCLA, we actually have movement to ours. If you lose, you drop in the poles. It's not, you just don't hang out because you're a story program. So, Kaz, let's get right into it. Give our viewers uh, your thoughts. Well, you know, Michigan State dropped out of our poll uh, from last week. And this week we have Texas moving into our poll, into our top 10. Uh, they're at number nine. You know what the Longhorns have been able to do this year. They're six and zero. 
Um, and Spencer Price, their attackman, has been putting up some serious, seriously good numbers. Seriously. So, uh, so it should be, you know, it should be interesting to see, you know, how Texas does once they get into, you know, some of their harder games down the road. Um, but yeah, we have them at number nine. Exactly. And then at uh, number ten, barely hanging on, we have the Chapman Panthers. You know, I don't know if they're ever going to be able to beat BYU again. They have struggled against BYU mightily, and uh, they've dropped their last two contests off the top of my head, the overtime, overtime thriller last year, as well as the game in Greenville. You know, it's tough for Dallas Hartley. He's trying to get his boys back back to the story program that Chapman is, but they're off to kind of a rough start here in 2013. But knowing him and knowing what he's all about, I'm sure they'll be able to figure things out, and come Greenville, you don't want to face off against the Chapman Panthers. Yeah, and also moving up in our poll is uh, to number seven is Colorado. You know the Buffs. Um, the Buffs play their first real, uh, real game this weekend against Oregon. Um, you know, and that should be a real test for for uh, for Boulder as they take on you know an elite program. Exactly. At number eight, we have the Cal Bears. Um, they actually take on Sonoma State University this weekend. A game that will be shown on Lax TV. Be sure to check it out. Lax TV produces many games this weekend. You can check them out. All kinds of action. Uh, yeah, so that's uh, that's our power rankings. I'm Kazmir Morowski. And I'm Ryan Heydrich. See you later. Welcome back to Lax TV's coverage of the NCAA Division II. We have the Chestnut Hill Griffins at the Dominican Penguins. Today's coverage is presented by Epic Lacrosse. Epic Lacrosse delivers the finest manufactured lacrosse equipment designed to increase playability and maximize performance by using world-class materials and techniques. Developed in collaboration with True Temper Sports, 
Epic shafts are made from the highest grade materials available. They have tested and retested each design to ensure durability, playability, and performance are optimized. Their goal is simple, to give the players every opportunity to reach their true potential. Live, play, be Epic Lacrosse. In Sportsboard, Sportsboard, a revolutionary mobile assessment solutions company for college, club, and high school coaches. In Gorilla Wraps, Gorilla Wraps is fast becoming the premier provider of lacrosse helmet wraps and decals in the nation. As a brand started in Maryland, we know what is driving the sport of lacrosse. Let us help you take your look to the next level. Design, wrap, play. And Team Minnesota. Team Minnesota, an elite program focused on helping develop Minnesota lacrosse and help you find the right place to play college ball. I'm Ponchito Ojeda alongside Kazmir Morowski. Kazi, we're about 10 seconds away from faceoff. Any quick thoughts before we get going? Uh, just, just see how this young Dominican team responds here in the second half. Uh, you know they're they're down by nine, but you know they they're with their uh, quick strike offense. Um, it's not it's not too far fetched for them to come back in the second half. Yeah, absolutely. I couldn't I couldn't agree more. I think that uh, Dominican certainly going to be uh, a force to be reckoned with here in the second half. And uh, and here we go. First face off, won by Acevedo. Acevedo, yep. Acevedo's got a big face off here, and uh, Dominican's off and running. Ball is back with number five, Jake Fritz. Over number four, Cody Bernstein on to Clifford. Chestnut Hill looks like they're going to extend out a little bit on defense. Maybe try to keep the uh, the Penguins off their he on their heels. Here comes Jake Bernstein down the right side. Um, you know he's one of those guys who we talked about in the pregame show who you know kind of needs to get going for the Dominican Penguins on offense. Uh, you know they've kind of struggled. They've kind of struggled keeping the ball. Um, and uh, it's up to him to, you know, control the tempo. Yeah, here we go. Here's Bernstein right here. Jake dodges down the alley, fakes a pass. Chestnut Hill fakes a slide. Ball works over to Powers. Power dodges down the alley. Pretty good defense by number six. It looks like a push, but no call by the official. Chestnut Hill struggles on the clear, but they're able to get the ball up to number five, Craig Owen. And ball down to number 27. To number uh, 16, works the ball to number eight. That's Daniel Wiener. Ball's number seal, Brian Rocca, as uh, the, the ball was uh, poor pass by Chestnut Hill. You know, that was kind of a mistake for Chestnut Hill to push that there. Uh, you know, what they were doing in the first half was kind of the opposite of that. They weren't really, you know, they weren't really pushing the issue too much. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, quick turnover there by uh, by Dominican on a, a tough shot by Bernstein. Probably a good rep, but he needs to bury that one. And uh, carrying the ball up the middle of the field, senior Cam Evangelo. You know he's uh, he was one of those guys who was on the uh, he's a senior. You know he was on the Dominican team that you know just started out his freshman year and kind of struggled. Um, so he's been through all the ups and downs of being on this being on this Dominican Penguins team. He moves it up top to Dalton Copeland. Another oh. one of those older guys. Copeland draws a shorty, gets his shot off off the pipe. You know, Copeland's taken three shots today. One was saved, two pipes. I mean, he, he, you got to think if a couple of those go in uh, an inch the other way, it's uh, a different ball game. Yeah, you know, I, if if uh, if I was Nate Webster, I would tell Copeland to keep shooting. Yeah, Coach Webster certainly can't be can't be happy with all the pipes he's hitting. There's another pipe, two shots in possession, two pipes probably beat the goalie, but. Uh, you know, good positioning by the goalie is what also allows it to happen. So Coach Doherty's obviously taught his guys well. You know, Doherty, a legendary goalie uh, in the MLL and uh, in college. You know, and, and it, you know, in Dakota Maurer, you know, he just chased the ball out again. You know, something we were talking about in the first half. He won a he won a possession by doing that earlier. That led to a Chestnut Hill goal. So, um, you know, good hustle by the keeper for the uh, for the Griffins. Good defense by the Penguins allows them to uh, turn the ball over as Craig Owens or uh, Shane Morlock rather steps out of bounds. Yeah, and Morlock kind of uh, kind of laps a judgment there. Um, you know, he kind of just stepped out of bounds. You know, that's kind of a home field advantage thing. You know, not not knowing exactly where the lines is as the other team. Speaking of home field advantage, you know, we're here at Keenly Field in, in San Rafael, California, and this is the first uh, NCAA game played at this facility uh, this year. It's uh, it's a gorgeous complex just recently built by Dominican University, and it's all field turf, brand new, looks great. And here's Copeland on the dodge, gets inside, shoots, 
And a foul pipe by Copeland. You know, it's kind of like the old, uh, the old game you used to play back when you were a kid in high school, you know, you play the three pipes. And we have uh, a loose ball hold on, on Chestnut Hill. Ball's back with uh, Dominican. Ball yeah, starts number one, Grant no, Clifford. Yeah, number one, Grant Clifford there was upset with the ref that he didn't uh, he didn't, he didn't uh, blow the whistle for the quick restart. Yeah, it looks like Dominican certainly is, is ready to go on the quick restarts, and it's certainly something that uh, you know, they, they want to do, and, and the, the referees are, are really should be looking for that. Uh, feed inside of Bernstein over to Clifford. Clifford takes a low-angle shot. Backed up by Bernstein. A uh, couple of notes about first half statistics. Uh, you know, Chester Hill had 23 shots to Dominican's nine. Uh, they also won the ground ball battle, 14 to 12. And it looks like faceoffs are a little bit even, nine, nine of 19 for the Chester Hill and 10 of 19 for Dominican. Uh, thanks to Dominican University for getting us these stats. Yeah, you know, I think a lot of those faceoff stats are a little, uh, a little inflated for Dominican. You know. You know, they would win the faceoff, pick up the ball, but then they would immediately be stripped by, a, you know, a Chestnut Hill wing player. And Chestnut Hill would retain possession. So, um, you know, despite having a 10 to 19 advantage on faceoffs, they really haven't, they really haven't controlled, the, uh, controlled the ball into the offensive zone. Yeah, absolutely. You know, that's something that, uh, like we said at the beginning of the game with Coach Webster and Coach Dockery, both of them said, you know, possession was going to be a big part of what makes Dominican successful today. And, uh or, or or Chestnut Hill for that matter, and and, and Chestnut Hill's won that battle, and it shows on the scoreboard. Yeah. And here here we got the ball at X. Uh, ball's worked up to number seven, Michael Duddy. Michael Duddy with a hat trick already. Gets over Dennis Klusaritz. Klusaritz dodges down the alley. Good defense. You know, Chest Chestnut Hill resorting to you know what they did in the what they did in the first half, being very deliberate on offense, um, and really really dominating the time of possession. Yeah, yeah it, ma it makes sense. And here they are setting up in a circle offense. Uh, and then they go back to a 2-3-1. And dodge down the alley by Duddy. Duddy draws the slide. Gets the ball to uh, Morlock over to Owen. Good Looks slide there by Dominican and good recovery. Timer's on, so 30 seconds left. Oh, man. And, it, and Owen with another interior goal. <laughs> it would appear to be no angle. I'm not even sure how that went in. Yeah, that was that was pretty incredible there. I think he went I think he went five hole on uh on the Dominican goalkeeper um number eleven Ryan Williams uh different from the starter the starter was um, Sean Donahue and he was pulled after a uh, after a, uh, a Chestnut Hill run um, but that was an amazing goal from uh, from Craig Owen who kind of just inside rolled and uh, you know and, s and snuck it with no angle into the goal. Yeah, absolutely. It was uh, definitely something that uh, it was impressive, and and it shows. But here's Acevedo with a quick uh, GB up there, fast break for Dominican. Feed inside number one, Grant Clifford, and he gets the ball around to number five. That's Jake Fritz misses the uh, shot. There's a flag down. It's probably going to be a trip, I think. On no, it's a loose ball push on Chestnut Hill. So Dominican goes man up after giving up the goal. Opportunity for the Penguins to uh, to get that goal back here. Go, You're watching the NCAA on Lax TV. Lax TV, we're changing the way you follow lacrosse. Follow us on Twitter at, at Lax TV. I'm your host, Ponchito Ojeda, alongside uh, Bulldog host, Kazmir Morawski. Dominicans man up. There's 9.02 left in the third quarter. Ball's worked around the power. Speed inside at number two. That's Cam Evelangelo for the goal. Yeah, you know, you know, uh, Evangelo's one of those seniors who I was talking about earlier, who really needs to get going here on offense. Um, you know, he's a, he's a captain and he's a leader, so uh, he's he's uh, a lot of the younger guys will be looking up to him to um, to uh, respond. Yeah, you know, I, it, it's really important for these seniors to to kind of carry this leadership at this point. It's something that these young freshmen, as talented as they are, they they need some of that help as they're as they're young and they're developing. And uh, it's something that these, these seniors can really take advantage of this game and make it a, a true good learning experience for these guys, whether they win or lose, right? And yeah. Coach Webster talked about that, about learning from each game and getting better. Uh, you know, ultimately, Dominican's goal is to be at the NCAA tournament. So, you know, in order to do that, you gotta got to get better each day. Big big uh, GB by number 48, that's Brock Beal. Yeah, talking about, talking about a captain, Beal's another captain who uh, 
you know, kind of does it all as a midi. He's really good at ground balls, comes off the wing, um, good offensive player, good defensive player. Uh, someone as a coach who you really ha like to have on your team. Uh, um, there's a flag down on, on that check uh, from number six, Donald Lynch on Acevedo. So Dominican's got a free possession here. Ball's back with Bernstein. Bernstein dodges. Nothing doing. Backs it out. You know, it seems like there's been a lot of flags today uh, on the field, and, and, and hopefully, you know, it's uh, just a early season early season jizzers from both uh, Chestnut Hill, Dominican, and, and, the, and the officials. Bernstein on the ball. Gets the ball back to number two, Cam Evangelo. He's inverted on Johnson, dodges. Got his head up, tries to feed inside, and it's stuffed and picked up by Chestnut Hill. So with 7.44 left in this third quarter, uh, Dominican's going to go man up, down 14-5. to five. Yeah, it really looks like a lot of Dominican's drives from behind are getting, uh, when they look to the crease, you know, they're either getting swatted down or they're just, you know, they're just missing the crease guy. Um, yeah, absolutely. It's a little discussion over here on the sidelines with Coach Dockerty and uh, the officials. Trying to see what's going on here. It looks like Chestnut Hill is going to be one man down with a penalty on number five, it looks like. Correction, number six. That's Donald Lynch. Lynch has taken off his helmet in the penalty box. So I'm not sure if it's uh, more than a one minute. Falls back with Kevin Powers up to number two, Evangelo. They're making it a 3-3 set here. Gets the ball number five over to Bernstein. Bernstein of Powers. Shot by number four. That's uh, Cody Bernstein. Quick restart from Evangelo. Feet over to Bernstein. Cross crease pass to Powers. Powers shoots. Saved by Maurer. Chestnut Hill trying to make the clear here. Balls up to number 36. That's Alexander Frederick. He gets brought up to number four, Austin Mercado. Austin Mercado, uh, actually from Temecula, California, a great Oak High School graduate. Kind of a little homecoming for him. And it looks like Chestnut Hill is going to be able to kill off this penalty. Yeah, you know, we were talking earlier about, uh, about the youth of the Dominican Penguins. Um, you know, this is a game where... You know, a lot of these freshmen and sophomores haven't really been in a situation where they've been down, you know, that down big to a big East Coast school like Chestnut Hill. Um, uh, good, good division two, good division two program. Um, you know, top ten in the nation. So, uh, you know, a lot of the leaders on Dominican really do, like seniors, uh, really do need to step up and and you know lead by example. Um, that means playing smart. You know, not making not making stupid decisions, and uh, that goal there makes uh, makes the Chestnut Hill lead 10. Goal at number 19, Michael Playa, a freshman from Hicksville, New York at Holy Trinity High School. You know, you, the one thing you have to say is that Dominicans certainly continue to play hard, you know, down by 10, but they, they keep trying. They, they want to make it to, to be the team that's, uh, that's fighting for that uh, spot, and so they're, they're continuing to work. We're back at the face-off X with, uh, with Acevedos versus, looks like it's uh, number 43 again. That's Nicholas Thomas. Balls down, ground balls retrieved by Dominican up to number 48. That's Brock Beal. Beal ball over to 12, Ferguson over to back to Acevedos, back to Beal. 5.51 left in the uh, in the third quarter. It really looks like Chestnut Hill's offense is just is just too much for the Dominican Penguins. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, I think Coach Jocker is going to walk away from this game saying that they, certainly they've uh, got an offense that's it's playing very well. Uh, you know, it's got to bode well for them going back home. You know, win or lose, they've scored 15 goals. You can't be upset about that. And so. Uh, you know, it's gonna it's gonna come down to this uh, last last half to see if Dominican can can muster up a, a fight here. 
Uh, with that, they're flagged down on the field, and ball goes back to the Penguins. They're going to be man up. Another chance to, to get that goal back and, and trim the lead back to nine. Yeah, and I mean, Dominican has 20 minutes to uh, to put up 10 goals, and, and as we know, the Dominican offense is very capable of doing that. It's just, you know, it's just a matter of if their defense can get some stops. Absolutely, and balls with uh, number 23, Powers. Work, Dominican working the ball around. Pass to Burns, uh, Fritz. Fritz up to Evangelo, over to Powers. Or, um, excuse me, that's uh, Bernstein as well. Back to Powers. Shoot to Ambil Ambilangelo. Big save by Maurer. You know, low to high shot. Uh, you know, pr pretty decent shot from, from Evangelo and, and Maurer up to the task. Yeah, you know, those are those are back-to-back man-ups that... Uh, that Dominican had that where they, where they looked like they just shot it into uh, Maurer's stick, you know. Um, Maurer didn't really need to make make too much movement or, uh, or you know, make a make a big save. But uh, but Dominican gets the ball back here. Yeah, absolutely huge huge uh, turn of events for Dominican. You know, they while they didn't get the goal, they they got the ball back and didn't and didn't go play defense, which is a good thing. Balls up top with Dalton Copeland. Looks like it's all back to even strength, too. Four minutes left in the third quarter. Dominican Lee, uh, Chestnut Hill leads 15 to five. Balls over with Copeland. Copeland's got a shorty right now. He's in a dodge. Going down the alley, early slide. Shot and score. Dalton Copeland. 354 left, makes it 15 to six. You know, and that's, you know, that's Dalton Copeland's move, you know, the, Left to right, split dodge, just down the alley, shoots low and away. You know, he's kind of kind of made a living of that of that dodge um, here in San Rafael for the past past three years. Well, after three pipes, you had to think that on his next shot or, or next couple of shots, he was going to put one in. No doubt about it. It was it's only a matter of time, right? Yeah, definitely. Here we are, back of the faceoff X uh, with Acevedo's versus Johnson. Acevedo's, uh, they get set. Looks like Acevedo has got the face, but he's not able to get the ground ball. Beal's doing a good job Beal. of boxing this guy out, but he can't pick it up. Good hustle by Acevedo, and, and Beal, Beal gets a GB. Well, oh, here we go. Here come the Penguins. We just talked about that. Having fight, playing hard, and, 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 and they still are. It's certainly not out of this game yet. And a lot of contact on the crease and no flag. Powers has got the ball. Almost he sticked, but he's able to uh, keep the – Keep the rock and, and I don't know how he kept that. <laughs> Copeland keeps the ball. I, yeah, he, it's got me. Yeah, you know uh, what's you know what's really gonna you know help Dominican in this oh, that's in these next couple of seconds or these next couple of minutes is uh, huge move from Bernstein. Is huge move from Bernstein. And it looks like it's gonna be unsportsmanlike conduct on the Chestnut Hill defender. He gets one minute for a legal body check. Just like that, it's 15 to seven. And as you can tell by the noise behind us, this, this crowd's fired up. Yeah, you know, Beal, Beal with that ground ball along the sideline, you know, that uh, just a hustle play and that really fired up, looked like it fired up the Penguins there. Um, maybe they can carry some of that, some of that hustle and, uh, and hard into this man up and maybe put another goal in here to trim the lead to, uh, to, uh, to seven. Yeah, and look at this. You know, one of the biggest assets uh, Chestnut Hill has had today is, is controlling the faceoff X, and, and because of that penalty, uh, there's no faceoff because it was after the shot. Uh, dead ball foul, and so Dominican's man up. Good chance for them to score here, and, uh, you know, Coach Dockerty can't be excited about w what's happening here. You know, four goal or three goals in, in the last, you know, five five to six minutes, and, uh, and they're man up. Ball over to Powers, up to uh, Bernstein. Bernstein back to Powers. Powers steps in, shoots wide of the cage, backed up by Cody Bernstein. 2:45 left in the uh, in the quarter. The clock continues to run, even though the ball went out of bounds. Ball over with Evangelo. Looks like they're running a little wheel here. Over to five. Uh, that's Jake Fritz. Clifford working on the inside. Skip pass is thrown away. Good check by Murlock, uh, or rather, uh, Melanchenko. And flag is down for punishing the pick man. 
as Melchenko goes to the rack, tries to feed it across. Ball is out. And Chestnut Hill will be man up with 2.12 left in the third quarter. Yeah, you know, that's a rule that, uh, that the officials like to stress is um, when someone's setting a pick, uh, you can't just run through them and, uh, and kind of check them. But, um, you know, that one, I didn't really see that one, but it looked like it looked like, uh, looked like the pick guy just got blown up. And, you know, that definitely warranted a flag. Absolutely. Have you checked out Bill Dodge? Check them out on Lax TV, an original show dedicated to all things lacrosse coming out each week. Or follow them on Twitter, at Bill underscore Dodge. Uh, I'm Ponchito Ojeda alongside Kazmir Morowski, one of the hosts of Bull Dodge. It's 2-12 left in the uh, third quarter. Chestnut Hill leads 15-7. You're watching the NCAA on Lax TV. Balls yeah. up top with Craig Owen. And Chestnut Hill has another EMO here. Um, you know, they've been pretty successful on these man-ups. Uh, Craig Owen, Craig Owen kind of running the show there. Pass inside to Michael Playa and great defense by Dominican. The ball is on the carpet. And number 11, Ryan Williams has the ball. Gets it up to Beal. You know, as I said earlier, earlier Beal's one of those guys who can kind of do anything. Captain for the Penguins, you know, he plays man down, um, as well as comes off the wing, kind of in between the in between the lines, Mitty. Yeah, you. But number I, four, Cody Bernstein, kind of just turns it over there, but Beal Beal looks like he's going to get it back. Yeah, you gotta love Beal's energy. He's playing really hard here in the second half, and really talking, showing exactly what you talked about—that leadership, that that example on the field. And he's setting it for these young guys. Yeah, definitely. Clipper working against number uh, 36. Falls down and uh, picked up by Dominican with number zero. That's Brian Rocca. Goes across to uh, Jake Fitz. He gets inside. Tries to pass well. Clifford balls on the carpet again. Flag is down. Another flag is down. There's carpet. Oh, there's one all over the carpet. We're gonna have to watch and see what they sort out here. Yeah, wasn't it? that was a very interesting play. Big hit by Dalton Copeland that kind of, kind of led to all hell breaking loose. Yeah, that was definitely a big hit and a clean one. You know, something that Copeland, uh, you know, really took advantage. The guy was exposed and he uh, went in there. Cleared out the uh, inside and allow his uh, teammate to pick up the GB. Yeah, Good. let's see what these uh, what the refs have to say about this one. So while we have this uh, discussion by the officials, let's talk a little bit about uh, tonight's game that you're going to be able to check out on Lax TV. It's going to be Sonoma State Seawolves uh, playing at the Cal Berkeley Bears. Uh, Sonoma State's ranked number 17 in the MCLA, that's the Men's Collegiate Lacrosse Association, uh, versus the Cal Bears ranked number 12. You know, Cal's off to a three and two start with a big win over Northeastern, ranked number 21, and a couple wins over Pepperdine in Arizona. Uh, they had losses to Arizona State and uh, UCSB. Sonoma State had a big win over Santa Clara, 17 to four last week. You know, that game, talk a little bit about what's gonna make the difference in that game. We know last year, uh, last year, um, Cal and Sonoma State played two played two thrillers. Uh, you know, one in the one in the quarterfinals of the or the semifinals of the WCL playoffs um, that went into double overtime. Uh, you know, and in both of those games, um, Cal had a Cal held a lead, or uh, sorry, Sonoma held a lead in the uh, you know going into halftime, and you know they weren't really able to clear the ball in the second half, and that was kind of their Achilles heel. Um, Look for in this game for uh, Sonoma to really to really come out hungry because you know they're you know they I'm sure they remember last year's losses to the Bears. Yes, and with that, the Chestnut Hill uh, Griffins take a timeout. We're going to go take a quick break. Uh, you're watching the NCAA on Lax TV. No sponsor of Sports Board, creators of the iPad and iPhone-based player assessment solutions that are used for recruiting, season, and camp activities. Sportsboard's revolutionary paperless system is used by over 60 men's and women's college programs is being adopted by club and high school teams. For more information, go to sportsboard-win.com. Welcome back to LAX TV's coverage of the NCAA, presented by Epic Lacrosse. Epic Lacrosse delivers the finest manufactured lacrosse equipment designed to increase playability and maximum performance by using world-class materials and techniques. Developed in collaboration with True Temper Sports, Epic shafts are made from the highest grade materials available. 
They have tested and retested each design to ensure durability, playability, and performance are optimized. The goal is simple, to give every player, to give the player every opportunity to reach their true potential. Live, play, be. And Sportsboard. Sportsboard, a revolutionary mobile assessment solutions company for college, club, and high school coaches. And Gorilla Wraps. Gorilla Wraps is fast becoming the premier provider of lacrosse helmet wraps and decals in the nation. As a brand started in Maryland, we know what is driving the sport of lacrosse. Let us help you take your look to the next level. Design, wrap, play. And Team Minnesota, an elite training program in Minnesota which can help you find the right level of play for your college experience. And just like that, looks like we're playing some five on five lacrosse. Number 27, Jake Craycraft from El Toro High School takes it to the rack and scores. 15 to 8 with 34 seconds left in the third quarter. Kaz, is that what the doctor just uh, just ordered for the Penguins? Oh yeah, definitely. You know they put up uh, they put up um, they put up five goals there in uh, so far in this third quarter, and you know it looks like looks like if they can win this faceoff, they can put up another. Their offense is really starting to click, and um, they can start possessing the ball. Uh, Dominican can easily come back in this one. Yeah, we have Acevedo's versus Johnson with just, uh, and Acevedo's gets it, but he falls down. And he's not able to pick it up. GB is picked up by number uh, 32 up to Johnson. They have a little odd man break here, a little fast break. Slide pass over to Owen. Owen shoots. Saved by Williams. And we have some hustle by the Dominican by player. Williams. Good face dodge there by the long pole, number 38. Uh, or that's, sorry, that's 36. Alex Keelan. Gets over 23, shoot and score by Jake Bernstein with two seconds left in the third quarter. 15 to nine, just by our leads. You know, and that's exactly what Dominican needed. Uh, you know, they've been, they've been doing a good job at the end of quarters, um, you know, kind of taking broken plays and turning them into gold. Yeah, you know, the, uh, the Penguins, we talked about this all first half, about their offense is capable of doing some great things. And here they have five goals in one quarter versus four the entire first half. But Chester Hill has got to be worried since they've only scored two. It's five to two lead in the third quarter by the, the Penguins. You know, going to the fourth, just down six, could 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 be an interesting ball game here. Yeah, definitely. Acevedo's and Johnson at the face of X. And with no time left on the clock, we're at the end of the third quarter here. Chestnut Hill leads 15 to nine. You're watching, we're gonna go to commercial break. You're watching the NCAA on LAX TV. And Jose finds the back of the net. Bryant inside the Yealy. This is going to be a goal for Yealy. Bojano into the middle of the cross. Bounce. Score! Sean Beer. Yes, on the field cam. Sends it up top. Left hand. It's shot by Vasilovsky. Welcome back to Lax TV's coverage in Civil A. I'm here, I'm Ponchito Ojeda along with Kazmir Morowski. You know, that was a big quarter for Dominican. Any thoughts before we get over to the field for the start of the fourth? Yeah, you know, uh, Dominican put up five goals in that quarter. It should be it should be interesting to see if they can keep it going with the fans on their side. It looks like they can. Yeah, absolutely. So let's go to the field here and let's get the opening face off of the fourth quarter with uh, Chestnut Hill leading 15 to nine. You're watching the NCAA on LAX TV, presented by Epic Lacrosse. Another fight on the faceoff. Good goose by Johnson, but a good check, good trail check there. And Johnson controls it. That was a, that was a big faceoff for Chestnut Hill, as they haven't had the ball really. They really didn't have the ball in that third quarter, and that's one of the reasons that uh, that's one of the reasons Dominican was able to kind of come back and chip into that lead. Yeah, Epic Lacrosse delivers the finest manufactured lacrosse equipment designed to increase playability and maximum performance by using world-class materials and techniques. 
Developed in collaboration with True Temper Sports, Epic shafts are made from the highest grade materials available. They have tested and retested each design to ensure durability, playability, and performance are optimized. Their goal is simple, to give the player every opportunity to reach their true potential. Live, play, be. So we're back here, it's a 15-9 lead, 14 minutes left in the fourth quarter. Chestnut Hill has the ball. We have to think they're gonna get back to, like you said, that deliberate offense, you know, try to really control the ball, control the clock. Just don't limit Dominican's options. Yeah, totally. Um, and look for look for Coach Webster to you know tell his defense to start pushing out here. Um, you know they're gonna need some they're gonna they're gonna need some urgency and, and start getting the ball back here. We have a shot from number Another twenty-seven. Another big save that's, by Williams. Yeah, it's a shot from Shane Morlock and definitely a big save from Williams. You know Williams has been playing very well in the second half. I mean we we both weren't sure about the switch of the keeper, but with the way he's playing, you can't be too upset, right? Oh wow, and that one's an, uh, by by Craig Owen off the pipe. Very inside of the pipe, it looked like. Chestnut Hill's got a couple of scoring opportunities turned away by Dominican. We have a dodge coming from, uh, can't quite see that number, so it's up to Owen, up to Michael Duddy. Duddy being guarded by number zero, Brian Rocca. Rocca giving him the alley. Duddy dodges, slide. Passes back to Dennis Kuzaritz. Kuzaritz trying to go down the alley. We have an early slide from Dominican. Moves the ball over to Duddy. Over to Kuzaritz. Ball's on number 41. That's Nicholas Thomas. You know, and this has been a this has been over a two-minute possession for Chestnut Hill. This is exactly what they need. Shot by Duddy. Over the cage. Restarts coming with Owen. And excuse me, 41's Matthew Festa, not Nicholas Thomas. Ball starting with Owen. Owen Dodge is going to the rack. Good slide. Good hard check. Ball's on the carpet. It's going to be picked up by uh, Dominican. They get the ball across to number 48. And there is a push in the back by B, uh, by Chesson Hill. Dominican on a fast break. Here comes Zero Rocca. No side. He shoots. Big save by Dakota. Dakota with a fly, another flag flies. Picked up by Justin Hill. You gotta think they might be two man up here for Dominican. That was a really good play by Beal to, you know, kind of uh, absorb that contact, hold onto the ball, and get the ball up to uh, to his LSM, who really had a really had a fast break and a good chance at scoring for the Penguins. Yeah, at first I thought Rock was making a mistake by not getting that ball. It was sick, but then those slide came, and it was a great time to shoot. Yeah. And uh, Dakota Mowers had a huge save right there. Yeah, he has. So Dominican is going to be two men up with 12.20 left in the fourth quarter, down 15-9. This could be a huge momentum changer one way or the other. Yeah, definitely. If Chestnut Hill, if Chestnut Hill can uh, find a way to kill this penalty, you know, it'll really kill some of the Dominican momentum. But if Dominican can score here and cut the lead to five, then – you know, they're uh, they're right back in this game. So here we go. Balls with Bernstein over to uh, Fritz. Fritz works the ball up to uh, Jake Bernstein. Gets it over to Evangelo. Dominican working out of a 3-1-2 set here. Working the ball behind. Being patient, looking for the right look here. Ball's over with Bernstein. Continuing to work that, take their time. Beat up to Jake Bur or Cody Bernstein shoots big save big by Mauer. Big save by Mauer again. He's he's all over those bounce shots. It looks like. Dominican riding hard. We have a clear here by number 32. That's Thomas Carfanga, and he's pushed. Looked like he was out of bounds, but he gilmans the ball up the field. Dominican gets it. Oh, a nice check by number 27 Morlock. Just as we said, you know that's a big shift in momentum. Big stop by Chestnut Hill. Um, you know when they're two men down, and they uh, they they hold Dominican from scoring. Yeah, correction, that's Melanchenko with the big check. Melanchenko, like we said earlier in the broadcast, big part of what makes Chestnut Hill successful. Uh, they have the ball now. They're still two men down, and on that restart, oddly enough, Dominican didn't double. Uh, looks like the penalties are just releasing now. Yeah, it looks like uh, it's all even now on the field. You know, away from the ball, we see uh, Jake Burn, uh, Cody Bernstein. You know, upset with himself on that shot. He he, he had the opportunity, but uh, 
you know, Dominic is not out of it yet. Still 11 minutes left. Uh, the Chestnut Hill's got the ball. Just need to get a stop here and get the ball back on offense. Yeah, and on offense, um, you know, they've the, the last two shots have been bouncers low. Um, oh, that's another save. big save by Williams. You know, you know, those shots have been low, and Dakota Maurer has made big saves on those bounce shots. So it um, should be interesting to see if, uh, you know, kind of if they they start shooting high. Yeah, Williams has been a stone wall here uh, kind of late in this in the second half. And, you know, that was a big shot by Melanchenko, and Williams had a nice step to the ball and good save. With the ball up top here with number 23. Bartholomew Pierre, Pierre dodges down the left alley. Got his man beat, no slide coming, but he works the ball down. Pierre works the ball around to number 93. It's Tanner Fisher. You know, I'm really surprised Dominican's not pushing out further here. I don't know if it's because they're tired or what, but you know, they, they really need the ball back. Fisher beats his man and squeaks it by Williams. Wow, he snuck it by him on the inside pipe. That was that was a pretty good shot. Looked like it caught Williams' jersey and just kind of skated off into the goal. And with that, Chestnut Hill sends the lead to 16-9 with 10.06 left in the fourth quarter. You're watching NCAA on LAX TV. LAX TV, changing the way you follow lacrosse. Follow us on Twitter at LAX TV. I'm Ponchito Ojeda alongside Kazmir Morowski. Kazi, it's 10 minutes left. Your coach Webster, what do you think the Penguins need to do here to get back in this game? Hustle. I think that that's one of the most important things. And, you know, keep your head up. You know, even if even if this comes out as a loss for Dominican against Chestnut Hill, it's Chestnut Hill's a really good East Coast team, and you know the fight—the fight that Dominican put up in this. Wow! And the fight that Dominican put up in the second half was, you know, was very, very, very incredible. Yeah, you know, I, I think that uh, it's one of the things that they, they've continued to do is they, they do continue to hustle. They're working hard, and like you said, yeah, that's what they did in the third quarter, and and they got some GBs and got some goals, and and there's no doubt they're they're still playing hard right now. I think that there's a still a solid chance for these guys to come back and and turn this thing into a really tight game. You know, and, and, and you're right about Chestnut Hill. They're, they're a tough, storied program, you know. Uh, I mean, storied for starting in 2010, but still, you know, Coach Doherty's certainly got these guys going in the right direction. So it's 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 great to see Dominican, you know, putting up a good fight, and, and let's see how this, the rest of this fourth quarter shakes out. Yeah, you know, and when you talk about young teams like Dominican, you really don't talk about uh, pushing through adversity, but I think that that's what they've, that's what they, they've been able to do because – you know they've dealt with adversity. A lot of the a lot of the uh, older guys. You know, like uh, Cam Evangelo, who's you know he's been he was on the team his freshman year that uh, that wasn't you know that wasn't the best. But um, Chestnut Hill working a little real action there. Gets the ball to number 22, Morlock. Low to high, Ripper beats Williams. 9:37 left in the fourth quarter. 17 to nine, Chestnut Hill over the the Penguins of Dominican. The assist from Duddy. Duddy's having a huge day. Yeah, he is. He had a hat trick there in the f in the first half, and uh, I think he tacked on another goal and uh, and another assist here in this second half. Yeah, I mean, I think if you had asked us before the game, we both would have predicted a, a high scoring game. I'm not sure we would have predicted 17 to nine though. It's, uh, Chestnut Hill's offense is is far better than we anticipated. Acevedo's with controls the faceoff. Nice goose. Goose is to, uh, to Jake Bernstein. Bernstein has the ball. Number six aggressively attacking him. That's Donald Lynch. There's Dalton Copeland as a matchup. He has a shorty. Hope they're going to switch it. Dalton's going to go anyways on Lynch. He's got a step. Makes a pass. Pass over to Bernstein. Jake Bernstein looks inside. Dives across and scores. That's a goal for Bernstein. 9 8 left in the fourth. Yeah, that was a great goal by Bernstein. He felt his defender was playing him a little bit too much topside, so he face dodged, came low, and dove across the crease to score. Yeah, nine minutes left, seven goals. Uh, definitely, a, you know, with the way we saw this offense score in the third quarter, it's a it's a achievable goal here. Gonna yeah, you know, as I said earlier, it's just a matter of uh, the Dominican defense making stops and, uh, you know, getting some turnovers here. You know, I think that um, when Chestnut Hill has the ball, they need to start pushing out. Yeah, Crossman wins the faceoff. Ball's on the carpet. And it's picked up by 
by 27 Malchenko, but he makes a poor decision. And uh, Powers picks up, intercepts his Bernstein. pass. Or Bernstein, correct, thank you. Bernstein intercepts his pass. And Dominican on the clear. This is a huge clear for these guys. Pass up to uh, number 18. That's Austin Franks. Franks gets it down to... to Powers down the sideline. He'll carry to X. Um, you know, Powers is a uh, converted attackman, converted to midi, so they like to run a lot of uh, like to run a lot of invert with him. Nice move by Powers, and a tip by the Griffins. Falls on the ground, and picked up by Bernstein. He's got the ball. Blast pass over Dalton Copeland. He's going to take a quick dodge here down the alley. He's got his man beat. Shoots. St stick uh, gets in the way, and Chestnut Hill is off to the races. Yeah, really good stick there by the Chestnut Hill defense. You know, that's that's one of the hardest things to do is not duck and get out of the way when someone's shooting. But On the fast break, balls down, picked up, and shot by number 16. That's Kevin Sauter Schaefer. Yeah, and Dalton Copeland looked like he was just, that That was just a frustration foul. He's running down the field and just and just decked that guy in the back. Yeah, you know, you think he, he thought he was probably going to turn or something like that, wanted to make some contact. And honestly, you know, not a terrible foul. The guy was right on the doorstep. was going to have an easy shot on Williams. So it, this way it gives him a chance to, to stop man down and hopefully get that ball back on offense. Uh, you know, that was a pretty good uh, – Pretty good chance for Copeland, and it was a good take. Uh, just, you know, they caught the shaft of a Chestnut Hill player, uh, and he had sticks up in the lanes, right? Yeah. I mean, that's what you teach as a defensive coordinator. You get your stick up. Ball's, uh, Chestnut Hill's got the ball over to number 27, Melanchenko. Back up to Duddy, over to Owen. Tanner Fisher on it, and then uh, back to Melanchenko. Melanchenko coming up, passes the ball to Owen. Owen's up top, passes to Fisher. Fisher steps across, makes a pass to Duddy. Duddy shoots high over the cage. Yeah, Duddy really let that one fly. It looked like he put his whole body behind that one. Yeah, Duddy's had a couple of goals from that exact spot down here on the end that we're on. Uh, and, uh, you know, he's he's got that shot dialed in, so why not take it, right? Pass to the crease. Tapped in by number 22, Shane Morlock. That's a goal, 18 to 10. Chestnut Hill. And the mosh pit over on the sideline looks a lot like Maryland's mosh pit uh, as they score a goal to extend their lead by eight with 7.15 left in the uh, fourth quarter. Have you checked out Bull Dodge? Check them out on Lax TV, an original show dedicated to all things lacrosse coming out each week. Or follow them on Twitter at, at Bull underscore Dodge. I'm Ponchito Ojeda alongside Bull Dodge host, Kazimir Morawski. We're back at the faceoff back with Acevedo. And it's picked up by Rockfield, another big GB, 18 to 10 with seven minutes left in the fourth quarter. Chestnut Hill leads Dominican. You know, we talked about earlier, uh, Faceoffs for Dominican, and they've done a really good job of winning faceoffs here in the second half. Here comes Fritz right around uh, the corner. Big save by Maurer. But you know, they really haven't been able to possess. We have a flag down on uh, a That's one minute. be on number four, Cody Bernstein. Um, I think they'll get him for either a cross check or a high hit there. Uh, you know, he was frustrated. The ball right in front of the crease, and he kind of unloaded on that guy. Yeah, Bernstein making physical contact and the referees call a one minute uh, high hit or high tar targeting the head. You know, something that has really been emphasized across uh, all sports, you know, with the concussions. Obviously the NFL has made that kind of uh, one of the major points because of uh, the, the injuries, with the, the, the post-concussion stuff that's going on in dementia and lacrosse is, is, is following suit. You know, US Lacrosse has talked a lot about concussion management and so they've really talked about trying to limit the hits to the head and lower in the head and all that stuff. So, you know, something the officials have been taught to really hone in on. Yeah, there was a there was a hit um, last year in in a in a Duke game on uh, Zach Greeley, and that was you know that was a really vicious hit to his head, and that was you know that was one of the hits that kind of um, you know kind of sparked some of the uh, some of the officials to. Um, to uh, you know, kind of change the rule and really, really start, really start uh, 
really started having those, um, calling those penalties. Yeah, it's just not how he works the ball there, man. I'll, and and he know he's safe from Williams. I mean, is Dominican going to have to, they're going to have to discuss some, some, some goalie stuff after the way Williams has played here in the second half. I mean, it's, it looks like uh, he, he could very well be contending for that starting position. Yeah. Only problem is that Dominican just can't clear the ball. Um, yeah, this is interesting. You know, uh, Chestnut Hill did not have the ball in the box, so therefore, even though they had possession on the their defensive half, the shot clock is not on. Ball over Tanner Fisher. He steps into a shot, shoots, misses wide. Five twenty-nine left in the uh, half or uh, in the game. Eighteen to ten. Chestnut Hill leads Dominican. Balls at X with the Chestnut Hill with Duddy over to Owen. Owen up to Kluzaritz. Kluzaritz is going to go to the wing here. Not certain what set this is. Looks kind of like a 1 4 1. Ball over to Morlock. Back to Duddy. Duddy's inverted. Duddy over to Owen. Up to Kluzaritz. Back to Duddy. 4.59 left, and the stall's on, so we got 30 seconds to get a shot on Cage. Pass up to Owen, Owen over to Kluzaritz, Kluzaritz over to Morlock, back to Duddy. Duddy dodges, hard push, good Another save. Another big save. Good save by Williams. And the since the goalie made a save, the shot clock will reset. That's right. So Chestnut Hill just earned himself probably another 30 seconds to a minute without having to go to the rack, but... They go to a call anyways by number 16. That's Kevin Sarter Schaefer. And on the uh, loose ball, chased out by Williams. Owen picks it up and comes around for an easy goal. 19 to 10, Chestnut Hill leads with 4.28 left in the second half. You're watching the NCAA on LAX TV. Presented by Epic Lacrosse. Epic Lacrosse delivers the finest manufactured lacrosse equipment designed to increase playability and maximum performance by using world-class materials and techniques. Developed in collaboration with True Temper Sports, Epic shafts are made from the highest grade materials available. They have tested and retested each design to ensure durability, playability, and performance are optimized. Their goal is simple, to give the player every opportunity to reach their true potential, live, play, be Epic Lacrosse. And Sportsboard, Sportsboard, a revolutionary mobile assessment solutions company for college, club, and high school coaches. And Gorilla Wraps. Gorilla Wraps is fast becoming the premier provider of helmet wraps and decals in the nation. As a brand started in Maryland, we know what is driving the sport of lacrosse. Let's help take your look to the next level. Design, wrap, play. And Team Minnesota. Here we are in the fourth quarter, 19 and 10. Chestnut Hill leads Dominican. I'm Ponchito Ojeda alongside Bulldog host Kazmir Morawski. 4 or 15 left, Dominican's on the man up. Falls up behind with Jake Bernstein. Bernstein makes a pass up to Bowers. Power shoots, scores! With five or five left, they cut the lead from 1910 to 1911. Nice shot there by Powers. He just got his hands free and, uh, and stuck it right past the goalkeeper. Powers is having a pretty solid game so far today. He's done a lot of things well and he's Stung, uh, I think that's two or three goals for him today. Yeah, you know, Powers is one of those guys, one of those uh, sophomores I was talking about in the pregame show that, that uh, Dominican has, um, one of their leading scorers last year. Um, and, you know, he's he's going to – he's a, already a good player. And, you know, just being a sophomore, he's going to turn into even a, an even better player, I think. 31, Charles Strober, Jr. Wins a faceoff from Ellicott City, Maryland at Mount Hebron High School. And Justin Hill takes a timeout. We're going to go ahead and take a quick break. We'll be back in 60 seconds. You're watching the NCAA on LAX TV.
Harris makes two, three moves, scores! Here comes the box. Dan Jose finds the back of the net. Bryant inside the Yealy. This is going to be a goal for Yealy. Bojano into the middle of the cross. Bounce. Score! Sean Spear. Sends it up top. Left hand. It's shot by Veselovsky. Welcome back to Lax TV's coverage of the NCAA, presented by Epic Lacrosse. Be sure to check out Epic Lacrosse on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Epic Lax, or on Twitter at Epic Lax. Epic, live, play, be. Chestnut Hill has the ball on offense, leading 19-11 with 3.40 left in the fourth quarter. They get the ball down with uh, number three, that's Thomas Pointis. A sophomore midfielder from Latitz, Pennsylvania, and Warwick High School. Dominican looks to be extending out a little bit, trying to get the ball back. And they're successful. Number 18, Austin Franks gives the ball over. With 3.14 left, he looks to settle it up. Back up to Jake Craycroft. Craycroft dodges. Nothing there. Settles the ball. Up to. Ball's up to number three, Dalton Copeland. Copeland comes down the alley, goes hard, passes it. The Macon's just looking to work their offense. I think they're not trying to go too hard here. Uh, you know, they absolutely don't like ball about Chestnut Hill. It's physical inside there. Flag is down as we see Brock Beal on the, uh, no, correction, Austin Franks on the ground. 239 left, we have whistles. Yeah, that was another high hit by uh, by Chestnut Hill, something we were talking about earlier, something that the refs are always looking for. Coach Dougherty from the sidelines, you can clearly hear a clean hit call from him. You know, the... Uh, the game has been very physical, but no, nothing that seems uh, out of place for a lacrosse game. You know, it's a physical sport. The officials have certainly been uh, free with the flags today. We've had plenty of man-up opportunities for both sides of the ball. You know, just in the first half, we had, uh, you know, we had uh, four for Chestnut Hill and one for Dominican. I think we've had probably double that in the second half. Yeah, you know, with... Uh with a big lead by with a big lead with Chestnut Hill, I think that uh, Dominican is kind of getting frustrated and you know letting their emotions get the best of them here. That's why some of these. That's why. Uh, that's why Chestnut Hills had a couple man up opportunities, but um, right now Dominican's man up. So yeah, and it actually looks get like another goal. it looks like it's gonna be five on five. I guess they caught uh, Dalton Copeland for uh, uh, also a high hit at the same time. Interesting. Ball's up top with Craig Craft with 2.37 left in the fourth quarter. Craig Craft's coming down the left alley. Early side, shoots, stuffed by the sliding uh, player. Pass over number five, Fritz. No one gets on him, but a stick gets up in the lane and knocks it down. That's a fair shot that's been blocked in the field of play uh, by Chestnut Hill. They've obviously been working on that in practice. That's a... And Chestnut Hill is able to clear. They get the ball up to number 24. Passes it down to number zero. That's George Marquet. Marquis, rather. Gets the ball up to number 93, Tanner Fisher. With a minute 50 left in the game, Dominican seems content to just, just play defense. Uh, you know, at 19-11, it's not like you're going to come back from eight goals at this point. So just playing good, solid defense, you know, trying to play hard is probably the best best way to go. Chestnut Hill is, oh, here we go. Dominican is doubling. Balls around. Marquis beats his man, shoots. Balls on the ground right next to the crease. It's picked up by Williams. 
Williams makes a pass out to number 22. Tough handle by Williams. Uh, number 22 making a couple of moves there. That's Ty Singh. Singh, we've heard called his name a couple of times today. Cam Avalangelo's ball with just a minute left in the half. And a shot. Here we see number nine, Ian Nichols. First time we've seen him today, and he scores. With 54 seconds left, Dominican hangs another goal at 19 to 12. You know, despite, uh, despite being down by seven uh, after that goal by Nickel, the Dominican fans and uh, the Dominican team were really fired up after that goal, um, which, is a, which is a testament to how the team plays. Acevedo's with another face-off win. Acevedo certainly, you know, has is, is done a good job of getting his clamp. Uh, you know, I think a couple of times they could have got GBs. You know, they probably wanted to get them, and they didn't. Uh, you know, Chestnut Hill got those, but... You know, there's a lot for Dominican to take away from this game that's positive, and, and Chestnut Hill certainly has to be very happy with their play. Uh, we, as we have 30 seconds left, Dominican's got the ball. Looks like they can try to tack on one more here. Avalanche on the dodge, beats his man, no slide, shoots and scores! Very good way to dodge by uh, uh, Evangelo, Evangelo and uh, you know, he did a good job of sticking top corner there. No one slowed, so he let it go. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's, it's something that, you know, these Dominican guys are playing hard. We got a couple new faces in there. Ian Nickel, uh, attack Kevin crowley Galvin also, and number 16, Connor Doyle. All getting some time here at the end of the game and, and, and playing hard. Balls on the ground, picked up by, uh, by number 23, it's by Rathalemu Pierre. Gets the ball over, and it's thrown out of bounds by Chestnut Hill with just five seconds left. It's going to be Dominican ball. And with that, we have the game. Chestnut Hill wins 19-13. We're going to take a quick commercial break. We'll be right back. You're watching NCAA on Live TV. Here's Sponsor Sports Board, creators of the iPad and iPhone-based player assessment solutions that are used for recruiting, season, and camp activities. Okay. Sports Board's revolutionary paperless system is used by over 60 men's and women's college programs is being adopted by club and high school teams. For more information, go to sportsboard-win.com. Welcome back to Lax TV's coverage of NCAA. Uh, we were he we're here live. My name is Ponchito Ojeda, alongside Casimir Morawski. Chestnut Hill is victorious over Dominican with a 19-13 win. You know, what was the difference maker for the the Griffins to pull out this W? Well, you know, I think it was their it was their offensive play. Um, you know, they really controlled the tempo. Uh, they pushed when they needed to. They pulled it out when they uh, when they needed to, and they really um, offensively they're really deliberate and they really controlled. You know, they controlled the entire game with their offense. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think I think there's no doubt about it that Chestnut Hill showed up and played great, great lacrosse today. You know, they go two and zero on their on their road trip out west with wins over uh, Dominican and, and NDNU. You know, what do you think Dominican takes away from this game? Well, you know, I was really impressed with the Penguins. You know, despite being uh, despite being they were down at they were down by ten at one point and they uh, they kept battling back. And you know, that's the sign that's a sign of a young team who you know really uh, you know really trusts its players and. Uh, has trust in his coach and uh, coach Webster. Um, you know, despite losing, losing, ended up en ending up losing by six. Um, I think that uh, Dominican can take away, um, you know, the hustle, you know, the hustle factor that really that really helped them with a run there in the uh, third quarter. Yeah, and we spoke with Coach Webster before the game. He talked a little about the youth that they have there and, and how much they're going to be, uh, you know, an important part of their success. And, and he talks about learning from playing East Coast teams when last season when they uh, lost to Delphi and, right. and this year. I think with this loss from Chestnut Hill, I think they can take a lot away from it. And and it, we should be impressed with them. They played hard. They played better in the second half than Chestnut Hill did. And, and I think that uh, they're heading East next week. they got a couple of big games. And, and I think that they're going to be successful. I think they might 
you know, be able to rattle off a couple victories. And uh, certainly something to be proud of. You know, we're going to head out here from Lax TV, but I want to say a special thank you to our sponsors, uh, Epic Lacrosse. Uh, be sure to check them out on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Epic Lacrosse. Also, Sportsboard. Uh, follow them on Twitter at Sportsboard. And Gorilla Raps at Gorilla Raps. And lastly, uh, Team Minnesota. You can follow them at, at Team MN. For Ponchito, uh, for Kazimir Morowski, I'm Ponchito Ojeda. For our entire Lax TV crew, thank you for tuning in. Be sure to check us out on Lax TV. Thank you and have a great day.